it chill if I'm sideways? Or am I sideways? Which way is it supposed to be? Now you're I, now you're upright. Now you're You're good. Now you're good. Am I good? Now you're good. You're good. Okay, sweet. It was tripping for a second for sure. Okay. Nice nice background. <laughs> it was the only place in the house that like is that I that I can like set up my shit. I got this sure, table. Like, for the <laughs> Yeah, I found this table on the front porch. I didn't even know we had it, dude. You didn't know you had a table on your front porch? Nope. It's foldable. It was oh, just okay. like, yeah, it was leaning out. Well, dude. for everyone that doesn't know, we got Ray, the rum wizard Cronenberg here for episode seven. What's up, Ray? Uh, not much. Chilling, dude. What are y'all doing? Just talking with the homie. That's about it. Uh, real quick. If you don't subscribe, like, comment, all that bullshit. Okay. Where did the rum wizard come from? Oh, the term? Like, the name? Yeah. Just r- right off the jump. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so, Josh Hayes, another skater from Chattanooga, was getting married. And the wedding was in... Uh, I'm wearing Montana, dude. I don't even remember where it was. A, it was a smaller town. Um, they had an airport. We flew into the town that it was close to, and uh, dude, yeah, that was so weird. Oh man. Um, Why? What happened? <laughs> yeah, dude. So the homie was having a wedding, and. Everyone flew out there, but no one had enough money for like anything. I didn't bring no one brought I didn't bring a blanket. I didn't bring anything because I figured we would sleep somewhere like safe, <laughs> a house or something. I don't know, but um we ended up we got off the plane, or I got off the plane, met with Gumby and Will Ensenauer and another friend from Chattanooga and how we been it and make sure i'm not forgetting money i think that was everybody some heavy hitters there this is a good wedding it, it was a very sick wedding but we we rode out with a huge bottle of clear room and tried to find somewhere to sleep in the middle of the wilderness in montana which was in, interesting uh pretty stupid honestly what time at one year? point huh what time of year oh, it wasn't you? cold it was in the summer it was yeah okay well it I actually do it was pretty cold that night dude it was <laughs> cold at night but um i think it was in the summer someone else will probably listen to this and tell me that i'm wrong um but it wasn't it wasn't winter and uh we fucking rode out on this dirt road super far probably like 10 miles on this dirt road we were like riding on top of the fucking car just like wasted and shit like surfing on the car and like the homie was getting pissed that we were surfing on the car and like i felt bad about that and then we just drank more and it was it was it was rough we got out to this random fucking construction site and that's where we decided to sleep and um so we just partied there and there were like there was talk of the fucking of the house having like a torture chamber and like the house like looked out well it was kind of weird but i mean it was just the way the foundation was laid out um but it looked like a fucking like they were building a torture chamber so me and gummy were pretty stoked on that and yeah how he was too we fantasized about that for a while and so there's then, nothing going on at the construction site it was just like no materials no nothing dude weird it's like it, it was like they they did the foundation and they just didn't have enough money to do anything else or they were waiting i don't know maybe they were waiting to get power to it or maybe they were waiting to get i don't know i mean it was in the middle of fucking nowhere dude like they had to have been the type of house that uh like off-grid type shit hmm. so it was like it was like a, it was a hidden home dude but um not that hidden. Had, you guys found it 
dude, we found it. It was so, it was so weird, dude. And we slept there, and there was a dock on this bog. It was like a fucking swamp, dude. And pretty much the whole story is, I got fucking wasted, and I slept on the dock in how we did, because <clears throat> I didn't have anywhere to sleep. Gumby slept leaning on the tire. I remember he fell asleep, dude. He fell asleep with his neck, like entirely bent ninety degrees on the whatever. It was hilarious, but um, I fell into the bog in the middle of the night. I guess I got up to pee or something, <laughs> and I was in the bog all night, pretty much all night. Um, Just never got back out of it. No, I was like black out, and I couldn't. I I like I vaguely remember like the feeling of being lost in the bog, but like not. I don't remember seeing anything. I mean, it's pitch black. So, like, I don't know if you ever swam it pitch black. But, like, you can't tell where the line of water is. And, like, you'll swallow water up and shit. It's really hard to swim at night. Or at least for me it is. Like, I got super tripped out before. But being blackout drunk, too, I just stayed in the bog all night. And Howie woke up. And I was just flapping in the water, dude, trying to stay alive. <laughs> and... And he like called me to the shore and um he said like I was like covered in algae like I came out like a fucking swamp monster and like I don't know it was just, and then they just like they said that the fucking bog granted me powers and then I was the rum wizard it, it was like a way to lighten it kind of you know what I mean in, in a sense because I almost fucking died in this bog and then like we just made a joke out of it and called me the rum wizard. Holy shit. shit. Fucking it was a good time after that. It was it was a good time the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I'm called the rum wizard, because I spent the night in a magical power bog. Yeah, in, in the some random fucking haunted bog in Montana. There's yeah, weird. Fucking you're like a creature from the bog. This is a great yes. story to start off with. <laughs> For real. I didn't yes. realize it was going to be like a near-death experience, but like, fuck, that's a... No, great... it was kind of in a way, yeah. I don't remember it. <laughs> but like, afterwards, I came out of the bog, dude. I came out of the bog, right? And I was covered in the algae, and Howie was trying to wake me up, like, ask me what was going on. And he said that I just stared him in the eyes, and I went... You've been out here this whole time and you haven't done anything. <laughs> and he was just like, he told me later, he was like, What were you talking? What was that about, dude? Because, like, he, I guess we just brushed it off or whatever. Because I woke up after that. I don't really remember saying anything to him. And then I tried to put my underwear on my, as a shirt because I was still wasted and probably had like hypothermia. Damn. It was funny though. That's... Yeah, I got possessed by the bog, and then we 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 still camped the rest of the weekend. We didn't have anywhere to sleep the whole still rest of the weekend. So that day we went to Walmart and we bought blankets. And I had this huge gray blanket that I wrapped around myself, and we spent like a couple of hours at one point killing mosquitoes because we didn't have anything to do. We were stuck and we were in the wilderness in Montana killing time. No cell phone service. So yeah, we killed mosquitoes. It was it was interesting. We were far too intoxicated the, the whole time. That's what he's. Did you guys just keep going back out to the uh, your abandoned foundation? No, we definitely ditched it. <laughs> we did not return, dude. We swore to never go back. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. At least I did. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. I don't know if we could find it again. I'm sure we couldn't. I I definitely could not. I don't even remember the name of the city that I flew into. So, um, well, for people that don't know, you're damn, you're living fun. in Chattanooga right now. Yes, yeah, I'm in Chattanooga right now, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's where you're from yeah. originally, right? Like fully, like that was your city when you were born. No, I was born in LA, and then we moved here uh, when I was two. 
Oh, wow. And then I lived here until I was, like, 19. Yeah. And then you went back to LA? Yeah. Nashville, and then back here, and then LA, and then back here. Yeah. So, I mean, part of what we talk about on this, whatever this is, uh, we always Mm -hmm. ask some of the guests, like, how'd you get into skating? It's always pretty funny hearing everyone's different experience. Um, what the fuck year was it? It was 99. 99, they opened the skate park and they had the fucking Tony Hawk Pro Skater like release of the game at the skate park. Whoa. So we went to that shit and we bought skateboards that day. Me and my brother both, or well, my parents bought the skateboards. I was like fucking six, I guess. And then like six months later, after skateboarding for a while, one of the dudes that ran the skate park, uh, Matt Hellstrom, he actually lives in Macon now, I believe. Still that skate. Last, that last name is familiar. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that. He ran the park. Uh, yeah, and he suggested that I get skates, actually. So I fucking tried it out. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that that dude, and there was a crew too. Like, uh, there was a whole crew. I don't, I don't even want to. I know Josh Hayes. He he was skating then, and I met him, and like he was one of the reasons I got skates too. Um, dude, whose wedding that was? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a huge crew back in the day. So, so like skateboarding and wanted to do something different and then somebody tell like an older dude that you looked up to being like yo you should get some skates I fucking tried it out so you were like going to the skate park with your brother you guys are like skateboarding and you saw you saw like a crew of skaters oh yeah dude that was and they ripped too dude, dude they were fucking honestly what probably what it was oh shit we lost him well this is a first yeah Hope we get him back. That'd be cool. Well, how do you do it? I'm going to try and invite him back. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, but maybe his phone died or something. This is going well so far, though. I'm really happy. Great story, yeah. especially the bog monster. He is a bog monster. <laughs> how he didn't help him either, of course. <laughs> you the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to call him. Because we're homies like that, and I can call my friend Ray. It's ringing. The wireless customer you are. I'm like, guessing that his phone died. I'm pretty sure he was using his phone. Well, we're on episode seven here, the Wax Toaster. Now it's just me and Joey. What's up? Hopefully we get Ray back. Yeah, it'd be helpful, but oh well. It'll work out. Do you think I have time to go smoke a bowl? Yeah, should we pause it? Yeah, we're going to... and. Well, I'm so sorry. My phone died. That's all okay. good. We're plugged in now, though. I'm Dude, juiced it, was, in. it was fun to have a first. You did it. That was the fear of the first. First disappointment. Oh, no way. For, dude, I honestly, I should have. The old that. Houdini. That was great. Yeah, I loved You're it. You're like bog monster wizard, and then you just disappeared. Yeah. No, Proving yeah. the magic act. <laughs> Well, I have returned. <laughs> uh, we were you were talking about seeing some of the crew and like down and like was that skate park in Chattanooga? Yeah, yeah. It was at the time it was a sanctuary skate park, which was uh they did a bunch all around the south. Like I know they had them in Florida. I'm pretty sure they had them in Georgia too. But they're just like they're uh, prefab parks. It's still there. I don't really know how. I'm surprised it's still there. I guess it's made of fucking steel and shit. But, um, yeah, 
sanctuary skate parks. It was, they used to have this thing. <laughs> it's funny because it's like the fucking Bible Belt and it's like this church skate park thing. They had a thing on Tuesday where you could, it was called Praise and Skate. We could go and listen to a 45 minute long lecture and then skate the whole rest of the night for free. So there'd be this like fucking stampede of fools that just sat there and like shot the shit with their homies for 45 minutes and then got in for free. So there was, yeah, if you would go on Thursday, there'd be a shitload of motherfuckers. But like, other than that, there was always, there was always bladers there and they were ripping harder than skateboarders. So it was kind of like, as a kid, you see that and you're like, I want to do that. Fucking ripping. Dude, what, the homie used to like, yeah, Josh Pace, like when I met him, he could do like perfect 20 foot long true fishes and shit. You know what I mean? Like back in, I guess it was like 2000. So yeah, I was like, I want to do that shit. That was tight. That's sick yeah. that you got to see someone like that. Like right yeah, off the bat. Yeah, fucking good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He was like, I'm pretty sure he was flow for razors at the time. He was, yeah. Yeah, because he was on razors later on too, like more officially, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. When he was out in Denver, he did a uh, let it shit, which if you haven't seen that, you'll watch, look it up. That shit's it's sick. fucking great. Everybody yeah. should watch it. Fuck. Yeah, that shit. Right. What was it? What was it called again? Uh, I think it's just Razors. Josh Hayes at it. I mean, I don't know. Usually the Razors edits are like. Yeah, they're like pretty standard. Like this is, this is what the edit is. This person, this name. Is that when yeah. they had that cool intro with all the graphics and it's like razors? For sure. Pop da da da. You'd see like all like the dope hip hop tricks. Mm hmm. Brazilian air bass. Yes, it was like green and pink or. I'm colorblind, so maybe it wasn't. I don't know, but it was colorful. I do remember that. So you you started skating in Chattanooga around like 2000. So you've been skating mm -hmm. for 20 years? Damn. Yeah, like 21 years. Because I started when I was, well, maybe it's, I don't really know. I don't know. Because it was, I started skateboarding in the summer when I was six. And I'm 27 now, so I don't know. Yeah, 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 20 or 21 years. I think that's, that's fucking cool. awesome. Yeah, a long time, dude. Yeah, you've seen it all. Uh, like, I don't remember it all. No. <laughs> that's fair. That's definitely fair. I mean, I was so young, too. Like, I don't even, I don't know. Do you, like, do you remember, like, most people remember things from when they were, like, eight years old and shit, but, like, I just have, like, I don't know. I don't really remember. Maybe I hit my head too much skating. I don't know. I got bits, like like some shit. Yeah. But I <laughs> do remember being on Roller News when I first started skating and seeing you skating some fucking baseball ledges with like like a nice set of blonde hair. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Nice Damn, set. I been very young. Like, you know, like yeah. this. Like the like the standard like oh yes baseball legends <laughs> damn that was in Nashville yeah I when I was when I was younger I used to go up to Nashville quite a bit I guess when I got a car I started I just started going up there like every weekend is that how you got linked up with the possessed dudes yeah Earl yeah yeah around that time yeah because yeah because they were all in nashville hanging out and shit and then um i ended up actually i guess when i really started kicking it with them was i mean we filmed and shit but then i went and i went and stayed with them in memphis and then i just started doing that rather than going to nashville usually and that was a while and then possessed kind of chilled out you know Dude, Memphis is sick. I miss Memphis. How far is that out from you? Like an hour, hour and a half? No, it's five. Five <laughs> hours. Yeah. No it's shit. Far. Yeah, Memphis is, it, yeah, I live on like the, the southeastern tip of Tennessee. 
and Memphis is on like the fully western side of Tennessee. So okay. you switch a time uh, time zone when you drive there. Yes. Because you're like I'm actually we're we're really close to the time zone. Um, on the way to Nashville, which is only an hour and a half away, if you're going fast, uh, it is, is you you go through a time zone there too, which is sick. So every time you go, you like trap, you get a fucking free hour on your way there, which is always tight. That's sick. Yeah, that's got to be kind of weird though if you have like some sort of obligation there or like mm-hmm. kind of so like you got to on it. Or going yeah. back, I guess, like going back, you lose that hour again. So it's like mm-hmm. that's got to be a little bit of a trip. That would that used to suck because I would go there and I would hang out. I would leave. I would like get off of work get my check, cash my check, go buy weed, go and fucking get whatever I needed for the weekend, load up one bag, and then I would go to Nashville all the way up until the last minute I could stay there, possibly on Sunday night. But then I would drive back, and it would be like I'd get back at, I would think it was going to be 2 a.m., and then it'd be 3 a.m., and I'd have to go to work at fucking 8 a.m. the next day, construction, and just be like, oh, my God. Damn. So that was, yeah yeah just fuck that's you. Just, it's so strange that it happens like inside of a state mm-hmm. and it, like, yeah. doesn't happen on the border i don't i don't know that that would be yeah. sad for me but no dude it's just like it's just this invisible i'm pretty sure it's on mon eagle dude it's this fucking uh yeah you just just out of nowhere you're you'll you'll just see your clock change on your phone Time barrier. Maybe shit that can happen in uh, Arizona. Like if you if you ever like drove from California into Arizona, mm-hmm. where they don't observe, so you can drop like two hours at one point, and then like end up like two hours ahead if you drive over a certain line. It's really fucking strange. Two no, hours? Yeah, it's really weird because they don't observe, and then like California's ahead or. I couldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I've I've always wondered, like, I don't know. I I know so much about the time zones out here because I've had to deal with it so much. Out west, it seems like, so different. Like you got fucking mountain time and shit too. Mm-hmm. Like mountain time is just hanging out up there. I think Montana's on mountain time. I think so. I would. Mountain time is such a sick name to like, <laughs> <For real. laughs> like. All right, this this one's just mountain time, dude. It moves just like slightly slower. Yeah. Fuck. Speaking of that, like time out west. So you lived in LA for a decent amount of time, correct? Yeah, about a year. Okay. Almost a year. Yeah, it wasn't a full year. I don't think. No. You filmed the whole eight down thing while you're out there, right? That's like that's when that happened. Uh, I actually filmed a lot of the footage here in Chattanooga before oh and I took all the takes out there and then so like we were stacking up down here with our cameras and then Mike was filming out in LA and um I moved out there and just took all the takes with me that we of all the shit we had and then we kept filming out there Mm. and we finished it while I was out there because we both had cameras, it was that was fucking sick. I didn't realize that. So you and the boys in Tennessee filmed a decent amount of a down then. Yeah, yeah, I filmed a lot of it, a whole Sweet. lot. I filmed almost all of uh, Taylor Poppins' part, and oh yeah, no. a lot of it. And dude, I, that tripped me out about that video. I was like, how did he do? Because I thought it was a lot of it was Buck. I was like, how did he get all these places? Like, what did, I mean, I know he travels and kind of moves around a lot. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right, dude. No, that was, that was us. Yeah. We had, a, we had, I've had a 1,000 um, for a long time. And um, I guess that was when, like, we really dumped all the footage from that. At, like, so after Meet Your Maker, I made a couple edits and shit. I mean, and I don't—I wasn't involved in filming Meet Your Maker. I—I I, I just skated for it and shit. Um, that which is a possessed video, which is um, great. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. 
all the of a sudden, video, great. The video yeah. was good. You gotta plug good. it. Dude, that's Memphis right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so after that, I made a couple edits and like I lost some footage, dude. I had some footage of Anthony, which actually, surprisingly, some of it resurfaced yeah. in the lightning edit, which is by Possessed. Okay. That shit is fucking rad. The footage of Anthony Armstrong, who I saw today, actually. That, yeah. Shout out, Peanut. <laughs> yes, dude. <clears throat> yeah, I saw him today. Did you? Yeah. The He's, fuck? Back. He's back yeah. down there? Yeah. He has family in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, which is like 25 or no, nah, it's like 45 minutes from here. So he's um, visiting, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's got vacation from work. And so he came down to see his mom. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I live with his cousin. Or, yeah. yeah, dude, he was just telling me that today. Dude. Yeah. I was like, I wonder if that shit's going to come up. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he was talking about he lives in a blade house too, like in the Bay Area, I guess. Like I don't know, it's just crazy. and we just spawned there, <laughs> yes. and then he was there, like all broken. Yeah, he like, fucked his yeah, knee. He just had knee surgery, and then he was gimping around. I'm like, "What are you doing here?" He's like, "I live here. What are you doing here?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I feel like no matter what, that's how I see it. Like it just comes up like, <laughs> yes. What's up, guys? Fucking great. Good dude, man. Yeah, he's yeah. an amazing guy. Shout out, Peanut. <laughs> yes, dude. Is he walking around good? Yeah, he looked great. Sick. That's great to hear. Yeah, yeah. The last time I seen him, good. he was still like... He said it was still hurting him some, but... um, Which I've been through that shit, dude. That shit is... I was just about to segue into that, but... He's looking good. Yeah, he looks like yeah. He'll probably he looks, he'll, he'll be skating soon. He's definitely gonna be working soon. He'll be skating soon. Sick, for sure. What injuries have you dealt with? Uh, I had meniscus. I tore my meniscus in my right knee when I was like nineteen. Oh no, shit. Yeah, Pretty I young. fucking dude. I was so stupid. I got it was like already kind of hurting me. Which, if anybody out there, I mean, we all skate, so, like, obviously your knees are going to hurt. But if your knee is, like, kind of really fucking with you, just go get it checked out. Because my knee was kind of really fucking with me, but I just didn't really care about it. And I've been working on it, like, doing a lot of flooring work and shit and um, just working squatting down low a lot. And it was really bothering me, and I got drunk, kind of drunk, tipsy at a session at the skate park, and I fucking did a stale grab, dude. And I ripped my meniscus out with my own hands, dude. I stale grabbed too hard. <laughs> and I literally tore my I'm own meniscus. Sorry, but that's fucking awesome. <laughs> it was like, so right? bad. So I, I always thought you tore it with the kick on the stale but you did you <laughs> grab and pulled your meniscus out Yo, dude, like, I was doing the thing at the time where i was trying to get them as flat as i could and which i don't try i don't do that anymore because of that injury but like at a point in time like i could like kick them out and i could like i could like float them like kind of flat like try to get your feet as parallel to you like to where you're looking down at like your flat sole plate, like a kicked out flat. When you Almost like how the skateboarder does an ollie and like really tweaks it out. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Dude, it's like but I just effort. pulled too hard, dude. I tried to pull it up to my fucking chest and like get it real high, and I just fucking ripped it out. It's bad. I, I rolled away, but barely. And then it was on like it was just felt like it was on fire, and yeah, that shit was not cool. Damn, so that's crazy that you ripped your meniscus in the air and still landed on a ripped knee. That's in a quarter pipe, four foot, four foot quarter pipe. And like I rolled away, but I was like dragging, you know, I was dragging my fucking leg. <laughs> it was yeah, that was wretched. I'm sure I was screaming. Yeah, it was bad. So then that was, was when you were right knee? 
right knee and dominant foot too. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Fuck, yeah. it's you should... topside really well for fucking having a knee problem like that. Damn. Thank you. No problem. It's scary. <laughs> but I, it's like, I don't really do that much switch shit. So I had to just wait, honestly. I just waited like, I waited until I was so confident that I felt okay that I can skate again. And that's when I started skating again. So is that before, after, I, that must have been after I met you at the Bitter Cold Comp. Yeah, that was after. And you were already yeah, like, you were there. Say what? That, I said, yeah, I was, I was probably feeling froggy there. That place was fucking rad, dude. That was a good time. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That was sick. Dude, we, we noticed that you're, the people that you were with were putting up Facebook messages like, we lost Ray. We were sitting yeah. at that diner. Dude, Anthony was looking for me, and he found me eating breakfast with y'all. Because we, we were, like, some of us were on our phones, and we were, like, on Facebook at the time. It was more popular. I don't even think Instagram mm-hmm. was a thing, really. And then it was yeah. like, you're like, yo, Ray, everyone's looking for you. You're missing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, I had those hash cookies, dude. <laughs> Oh, that's Yo, we were, you were running the cookies. Oh, I was. I wasn't running anything, but <laughs> uh, yeah, those were, cookies were fucking fire, man. That shit was sick, dude. Yeah, was I, I there? Cookies. Huh? Just, no, that was a different year. Yeah. Okay. We went with Anthony March. Uh, okay, is that you? Really, guys? Okay. I can't. I don't remember. One of y'all had the cookies. Somebody had them, dude. No, no. I, I, as much as I wanted, and matter. I took my fill for sure. <laughs> I fell asleep in a chair in y'all's place. I remember waking up in the hotel room, and there was just like snow blowing into the door next to me. And like y'all were out smoking a cigarette. I can't remember who. I don't know. Maybe this was a, no. That had to have been the same time. I mean, that was a sick year. John John won. We got to, yes. that, was, that was all a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it was that year. That was tight. So you, were you on Razors at that point? Yeah, how did that, that all come about? Uh, the Razors thing kind of happened through living in Nashville. Um and Chad at the time, Chad Anthony was like in touch with people at Razors or whatever, doing the, uh, I guess he was kind of doing some of the like cult revolution stuff. And I think he was, I think he was skating for them too, or they had given him skates and stuff. And I guess he sort of just suggested to them, he was like, yeah, but you should give Ray a pair of skates, which I wish they still needed the skates they gave me because they had the double lace like where they drilled all the holes out and it was like double laces, like the old Elliot's back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit was tight. Yeah. So yeah, they gave me a pair of skates and I didn't even really know. I didn't know. He was just like, yeah, they sent, they're sending me skates. I got some skates and then I guess they hit me up again. They're like, yo, you want some more skates? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, sure. I I don't know. That's like uh, like ten years ago now, or something like that. Jesus, was it? Or eight or seven? What year was it? It's twenty twenty one now. And that was in twenty thirteen. Whoa, you've been raises for eight years. Yeah, crazy. Yes. So. Yep. Unofficially, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You still get the skates, yeah, right? I guess. Uh, huh? You still get the skates, right? Yeah. Do they send you the new grays? Yes. Sick. Which, they're comfy, dude. Those are good. I like this. I mean, it's the same. It's cold. There's some over here. But like, you you the, it is different. Like, when, you, when you've been skating the same skate for such a long time, you can tell the difference between the plastics. Mm-hmm. You know, you yeah, Dude, white. white is so much bendier, at least with the razor. Yeah. Um, 
the gray is kind of comparable to the white. It yeah. feels pretty flexible. That's what Jordan was saying. Um, that they're pretty soft. Yeah, they're pretty soft. Dude, I had some, I found, dude, I found some vintage Colts. Not, I mean, not that, but they were older. And the plastic was harder back in the day, which I don't know. I don't really even know. I found some black ones here, some ones right here. These ones are, no, these ones are newer. Watch out for the hair. No, these ones are, no, these aren't them, dude. My bad. You just um, got the whole treasure chest of Colts in there? Dude, dude, I'm not. <laughs> maybe later I'll go back. In the, in the back there, I have, that's my basement right there, my crawl space, and I have a bunch of hidden shit back there. But, Sean, um, no. I got, what do I have in there? Do you, do you oh, the you main know? prize, Joey Chase SSM's hidden back there. Oh. Saving them for one day. Yeah, yeah. the homie had a pair eight nine and i was like hmm, i gotta keep these because i'm definitely gonna skate them someday <coughs> that's a good one to put on the back burner yeah oh yeah great Dude, choice. they had the high cuff they i do miss the high cuff that i will say that thing in the back was kind of nice do that shit adds it compensates if the plastic is softer mm-hmm. okay it adds like, just that tiny bit of extra support and m12s were like that i don't know why rosie's started producing theirs without i don't maybe it's something about the cuff or well no they own it it's their fucking skate why they start chopping the cuff what's with that dude that's not the m12 they're putting out the m12 that's not the m12 dude (laughs) they chopped the cuff man i don't know hmm m11 little bit less I, yeah <laughs> 11.9 i used to like uh lacing up the ssms and not having it laced through the plastic i liked having the just the skin be what pulls it together that Dude, i never knew that people laced it through the plastic and like one of the homies did it after years of the skate being out and i had never thought of that I mean, I don't, I mean, I guess I saw the holes there, but like, wouldn't it kind of look weird? I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess you do know. both, right? You gotta have like a deck. You do the and let them. You, you tie the valo yeah. on the inside, and you let them be puffy. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same shit. Me and Joey were talking before. Were you on SSM at all? No, no, I never. No, never skated for them. I. Remember I uh, I don't know if I ever talked to anybody about it. I feel like I may have talked to somebody about it at one point, but it was like, it had just been a ride. It would have been like, I don't know who would have been, I guess Shima would have been the one recruiting people. I don't know, but no, I mean, I talked, I, I talked to people who rode for him. I mean, I'm, Gumby rode for him too. And shit. And I was skating with Gumby or he was, yeah. Yeah. He rode for him. But no, I never did. So I, was, can- I, I didn't have, at that point I, I hadn't really put anything out or anything what was the uh, one that you did with gumby and anthony the- oh on the rise on the rise <laughs> yeah dude the that video was really fun that show was fun Lots of- um it's it's funny that razor sends you cults i've heard other talks with people and they're like for some reason, it seems like Razors doesn't want to send any other people that want cults, cults. It's just you. No, really? Yeah. Like they, they try. People have said that they don't, um, you know, I've been wondering, no one's riding the cults. I mean, on the team, at least. I, well, people are riding the Shimas now. Everyone's riding the Shimas. Um, yeah. But not that many have, not that many riders have been riding the cults, I guess. It's been really just like you, Jordan, Dom, uh-huh. and, and Joe Jimenez has been skating them. He's been getting skates with from Razors now. Good, good. But I do grapes. It's it's interesting that like they, it seems hard for like Joe to get SLs. Like if he was to ask, 
I don't know. Like, if you were to ask for other skates, would they give them to you? Like, have you skated anything but the cult since? I skated the shifts when they came out. Those skates were pretty tight, dude. Yeah, you would yeah. them. They were nice and sleek. Mm-hmm. It's it, the, the concept. I actually uh, coordinated with them a little bit on that. Um, Jeff sent me the pair that was like a prototype, and I rode them for like a month before or no i guess i skated them like two or three times and then probably sent them back but then i did skate the actual ships for a while um but yeah i told him i mean the idea was for it to be like a super cult yeah essentially to like be a modern cult um (laughs) which i was totally down for and it is that's what it is i mean that's what it feels like it feels it makes you feel a little boxier skating wise um they feel pretty precise the soul plates are bigger than the colts the colts just kind of have like this i don't know they just have a style too and while you're skating them you just feel like you feel more i don't know stylish than you do like boxy or precise i guess at least in my mind that's why the cult i'll switch between like i have a pair of like rollerblades with those like huge wheels and that feels like a performance mm-hmm. running shoe. And then I'll put my other skates on, and it's like I put my feet in shoe boxes. It's like such a weird mm-hmm. sensation when you move between the two different like models of things. Did you ever shift out? Yeah. Did you ever have a problem no. with that? No. Never. Wait, what do you mean? Like use the system? No, 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 no. Like I, I've seen this happen, like in in real time, where people are doing a grind, and they'll try and do a switch up, and the frame just falls off the fucking skate. I oh, hell no, nah, dude. No, that's just no. Real. I never, I never touched them. Like I'm sure what happened there was they had like taken the bolts out. You know that like hold the. I get. I don't know. I never really. In- in uh i never really fucked with the whole like interchangeable frame thing so i feel like maybe if you had gone that route you would like be at a higher risk for that but they were solid for me i don't know i never took any bolts out or anything though it was just the i just put my frames on is that like a thing on that frame like you can take bolts out that are like make it easier not to shift it yeah i think so i think you can just like trust a snap like it snaps in place or something i don't know but not the frame the frame is bolted in yeah well no the the frame is bolted into the negative and like a and like part of the sole and then there's like a sole that goes over it that like snaps in and then you can put two up bolts and like it's optional to put those two up bolts in which is risky business if you're asking me but it does make sense if you're just like putzing around and then like you want to put your big wheels on i guess but yeah it's a cool concept and the skate looks good on people so that's all that matters do you ever see grom bay do you ever see grom bay the the sacramento video yes i did i believe i did there's a clip in there where sneaky shifts out and he's trying to do a switch up on a down rail. Oh my yeah. god. It's like in his part. I'm no. pretty... it's worth worth watching that clip. Very scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck that. I think I do know what you're talking about. That's terrifying. No. I've lost a wheel before, like right after doing a pretty scary trick. The wheel just like rolled out of my fucking skate, but sure. never shifted it. Is there a clip of that? Um, I don't know if the... I don't think so. It was in... I, I can't remember what... It was a possessed edit. I jump over a rail and into a, like, a very small bank that had like a manhole on it. And either... I can't remember if it was... My wheel rolled out or if I was just missing a bolt. No, I think my wheel rolled out. But yeah, I don't know. It's a possessed edit somewhere in there. I jump over a fucking rail into a bank. Uh, Matty Shrunk, full cab alley, fished the rail, which was fucking rad. But um, 
That was in that uh, Julian Garcia edit, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. Atlanta, I think. Yeah. Oh, you jumped over that rail into a manhole. Into the manhole, and okay. without without a fucking bolt in my back wheel. I was riding flat at the time, though. I think so. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't as scary as it. Yeah, rather than landing on an anti rocker, that really. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very sick. So that's like your your kind of involvement with razors, though. As far as like like you get your skates and you skate the skates. Like as far yeah, as. It's kind of funny that you're asking me. I don't. I don't. I mean, yeah, I skate for them. I get the skates and I skate them. I guess I don't know. Because. Different people have different like levels of relationships with all these companies. It's fun to hear, like, because a lot of people don't know. They're like, "Yeah, Ray skates the Colts." He like posts like at Razor Skates. Just fun to yeah. hear, like, like, and you were like part of the yeah, RP cool. on like that shift thing. You like got to test it. That's cool. Yeah, that no, that was really cool. I was stoked that they brought me in on that. Um, and I guess I, that was probably because I've been skating the Colts for so long, and the idea behind it was the super cult or whatever um yeah that was i like i hope that they have some more some more ideas like that um the shifts were cool man dude we got it the viewers if you want ray to have a pro cult skate for razor skates make a comment below and let him know because he doesn't believe it but uh, everyone else, <laughs> you should have that pro cult. i don't believe it <laughs> you don't believe it mm-hmm. yeah i know no it. really of course he doesn't no. that, that makes sense that does make sense that's cool though i appreciate that come on jeff Agers. That would, that would... Hmm? come on jeff. <laughs> talking to you he knows we're talking to him. That doesn't matter. You know, I got to call him out and everything. No, I, w- um, I would be surprised. I would be stoked. I'd be honored if that happened, I'd, but I'd be very surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd probably skate more if that happened, but. Um, <laughs> fucking awesome. Yeah. You skate a lot. Yeah. Oh, really? You skate. Shit out of motherfuckers. It seems like you skate um, quite a bit now. I've been skating a little more, um, but then my fucking ledge spot just got busted the other day. Dude, I've, like, revitalized my local ledge den. I have this, like, hidden spot where I can go and fucking skate alone. Because, like, I'm not trying to fuck with people right now with the whole corona thing. Mm. And um, and the kids, like, dude, I don't know. Like, I was just talking to Anthony about this. Like, y'all are out in California, and I don't know how much, like, y'all – are worried about it or whatever but down here people really just don't give a fuck dude and like it's the numbers here are really bad so i've just not even been going to the skate park because like skater punk kids they're not even fucking like i didn't wash my hands for like fucking six months at a time you know what i mean like <laughs> they're not fucking they're not being clean they're not wearing masks and shit so I haven't been going to the skate park, but I had this ledge place that I could go to. It's like right up the street. And the cops just busted. I'm tired of skating my P-rail. And I don't know what to do now. Why, like the cops kicked you out of it? Yeah, dude. Yeah, they ran my license and everything, which was sick. I mean, I, I, I was actually kind of stoked they did. I was like, well, sick. I mean, you know, I'm clean, you know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> no warrants, no wants. I'm good. Yeah, you got nothing on you. Yeah. Good to know. The old pat on the back. Yeah, yeah. That's, that. It's fu- but it's like, is it like what? Why? Why? What's the reason for not letting you? Is it like a like a Walmart or something? Or like what? What is the th- like? What's the? Th- oh no, it's it was on university property, and I'm oh. not a student. So like the first thing he was like, uh, it was like he saw some. I live right next to the like local food bank here, mm-hmm. so there's a a huge homeless population right around my house and um people crash everywhere and so he i guess he was investigating a bag that was left up by the top of the skate spot 
and he came down and he was like hey man is that your bag i told him no and then he was like are you a student and i told him no and he was like well i'm gonna have to see some id because you're trespassing and it's like all right that's fine and i mean he asked me about skating i was like yeah i'm skating i'm not gonna fly to him got skates on so um he told me not to reach for my knife though which was funny i was surprised about that are you skate with a knife in your pocket yeah i was skating with my knife in my pocket dude i mean i I had the car hearts on it was safe dude dude the knife is rad i'm stoked on it i got it right here (laughs) this is the knife that i like to skate with (laughs) dude i was picturing like a little like yeah and he got me this for christmas dude that is a fucking dagger it's fucking razor sharp dude I sharpened it. You got a whetstone? <laughs> yeah, I was skating with it. Razor sharp. No. Um, I don't know why the cop was nervous about it, though. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's like, I'm sorry, man. I'm just used to wearing a knife. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, look at this fucking guy on rollerblades. Yeah. He's got a knife with him. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was more he suspicious. He had me and run so fast. dude yeah, so that yeah. p-reel you have i was always very i always admired it quite a bit because it's like this super metal looking t-bar thing that's the that's your p-reel right oh. dude yes i ripped we ripped that out of the ground it's a fucking uh it's a like a clothes hanger like the t-post of a clothes hanger okay so like you you know what I mean? Like you put a string, there's two of them and you put a string across the top and you hang your clothes on it. Um, yeah, I got that shit for free, dude, at the construction site that we were working at. We ripped it out of the ground and they, I, I was, it was my job to put it in the dumpster. I was like, no, I'm going to put this in my truck and go skate it. But it's super <laughs> rusty. The bottom of it is so rusty, dude. Like, oh my God. Cause it was like four, it was, it was in the ground. I mean, so it's just like deteriorated metal. It's kind like, of- oh, just like so, like the bottom of the rail is like super corroded. Does it feel good once you get it? Once you get it worked in, though, like with enough wax? It's kind of, no, it does so- not. Honestly, <laughs> maybe that was just the frames because I was skating the metal frames hmm. at the time. Hmm. I haven't skated that in months now. I put the T bar away because it's just like I mean. To skate it on flat is really boring, honestly. You got to take it, like, to some location with something interesting. Like, I took it to that. I took it to a bank, and that was fucking really fun. In that underpass? Um, in the underpass, I dude. Those, those are sick. Dude, that's a legendary Chattanooga spot. That's the Egypt Banks. That's dude. Called. Yeah, it's called the Egypt Banks. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big yeah man. there's they're huge too and to skate like to skate there you cannot get speed without like bombing the other side so you have to like bomb a mega ram to skate like just the tiniest bit of like this little bank but it's sick it's just tight that sounds like a good time yeah the bikers built like a little quarter pipe thing there that i skated recently actually Oh, like, it, like they DIY'd it into one of the pillars. Oh, I saw that, like, up one of the pillars. Into the pillar. Yeah. yeah. They made a quarter pipe. But it's, it's really hard to skate. Like, I, I barely was able to pull off just fucking riding up it and turning around and riding back into it. Yeah. Just you, bo- you got to bomb the fucking other side. I just start, like, like legitimately i probably had to start like 45 feet up the other side to get enough speed just to do the trick i don't know that's it was kind of extra but whatever definitely sounds like a biker spot something it is a biker spot yeah it's like pedal into yeah that that makes way more sense i bet they can much I bet it's pretty easy to accumulate, to accelerate on a BMX. Yeah. 
especially with like easier than on on rolling blades. And maintaining speed is pretty easy, just based on the size. Of the oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, how was winning? Any- what are you saying, Jeff? No, did you ever do any like BMX biking? Uh, I used to ride dirt bikes when I was a kid. Oh, shit. that shit was fucking rad. Yeah. My mom used to ride motorcycles. Like when she was in high school, she worked at a a motorcycle shop. And so I guess whenever I was like fucking around the time I started skating, <laughs> she wanted a dirt bike. I got a dirt bike. And yeah, I rode for three or four years and i think we ended up selling them or something i can't really remember so you grew up around like motorcycles and stuff and like dirt bikes was like a big part of your like childhood yeah yeah a little bit we used to yeah me and my mom used to go out and ride for sure and i would like so my grandparents live out in the country and um we used to go out there a lot um my mom's clothes with her her family or whatever so we would go out there all the time and I just I would just dip off on my dirt bike. I mean, I wasn't doing anything except for riding. I mean, I was just I would just go out and ride in the fucking countryside. That shit was tight. Go out in the woods for but not not years. super long. Yeah, my grandpa was like uh he was real into hiking. So he had like made all these like elaborate trails through his like property and like other people's property that let him do it, I guess his neighbors and shit. Cause he had like I guess he had like 40 acres out there in the middle of uh, Ultawa, Tennessee. And I would ride out in 40 acres and just what? blast off the dirt bike. Damn, that's... Let's hear that name one more time. What is the town? Oh, Ultawa? Oh, how do you spell that? Uh, O-O-L-T-E-W-A-H. Ultawa. That's a fucking mouthful. Uta, it's it's Utawa to if you're just saying it real fast in a southern accent, it's Utawa, but it's Utawa. Utawa, Utawa. <laughs> yeah, it's I believe it's a Cherokee name. Um, okay, and so is Chattanooga, which I can't remember what it fucking means. Let's see though, I think it's yeah, I can't. Remember. I don't want to say it wrong. When did you get into music? Uh, hanging out with possessed dudes. Okay. <laughs> they, uh, well, in high school, well, in fucking middle school and high school, at my school, I went to a, like a, I don't know if y'all have them out west. Or, well, y'all are east coast. I'm sure they, they might have had magnet schools. So there was, my school was a magnet school, and it was like a fuck. it like, so like, it's like a system of schools, I guess. And like, you can like, if you finish in one school, then you can go to this other school. I don't really know exactly. And they're like trade trade things, right? Like electric, uh, carpentry, is it that type of thing? Uh, specialized, right? They, they do have those, but ours was just an arts and sciences. Ours was Chattanooga School for the Arts and Sciences. And it was just like a standard school, but then I guess it was supposed to have like, better science class and better art classes, which it didn't have either of those. It was just a standard ass fucking school. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a good school. It was one of the better schools in Chattanooga. It's, I don't know if it still is, but it was at the time. Hmm. Um, but I took viola there for like eight years because you had to play, you had to do something. And I think you had to do a music. I can't remember, but for some reason I, I chose strings or orchestra and i ended up choosing viola and i played it up until like junior year well and then i don't know what happened i think guess i turned my viola back in and i didn't take it the next year and then i didn't play anything for a while and then i was hanging out with the possessed dudes and (laughs) their power was actually out at the time so we were chilling out fucking being not good kids and (laughs) um hanging out by candlelight and they fucking passed my 
their bass to me and I played their bass for a minute and then I was like damn I want to fucking buy a bass because I like I mean I, I'm, I'm I was high or something I don't know and I was like damn this is sick it reminds me of fucking playing viola or whatever but it seemed it, it seemed much cooler because I was you know I was hanging out with the homies we were listening to like probably fucking I don't even know I don't know I don't want to say anything so you guess um, Take a guess. Uh, I don't know. You're probably listening to DRI or something. <laughs> Maybe DRI. No, not not at the time. No, probably fucking death, like the death metal band, honestly. Um, and yeah, hanging out by candlelight, getting fucking wasted. Yeah, it sounds like. So yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, it was. I don't know how much rollerblading we did the next day, but. That was fun. Yeah, we the homie, dude. We, their neighbor, their head neighbor, actually busted up that night and cut. And he was like, "Yo, I can cut y'all's power back on for you." And he cut it on at the fucking meter. He popped the meter open, or no, I guess it was the next morning. He popped the meter open and cut their power back on. And they ended up like it was kind of shitty because, like, I remember being there and they were kind of like they were like, "Yeah, sure," but they were hesitant. And then the dude just did. And then they ended up getting billed from the power company for like an unauthorized, like reconnect or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's kind of hard to be like, hey, our neighbor did that. Yeah, our, our yeah, <laughs> right? on that. yeah, that's not gonna work. It's so jacked up. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <clears throat> you say that you're uh, you're like training in viola like transferred pretty well to the bass or like yes naturally yeah i think it did i think it definitely did well i played for so long too and um like i took lessons and shit like through the school they yeah. like uh if you uh made it to a certain level or whatever they would like get you lessons and shit so i took lessons and I got pretty good, it, like, within the school. I was, like, second chair, junior year. This one chick, Jenny White, she was a fucking, she was ripper, dude. She was good, dude. And, like, I just couldn't beat her. <laughs> and so. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. But I ended up I ended up not being as stoked on it or whatever. The, the dude was kind of mean. It was kind of, like, it was so competitive. I'm kind of glad I didn't go through with it because, like, I'm pretty sure my aunt actually played clarinet for the or or for the symphony here in town and she ended up quitting just because of the environment of playing music in a class like a professional classical setting like for a symphony like there's uh there's just so much like those people are under so much pressure dude that shit is like and everyone's like people are mean to her and like people were mean to me in class, like yeah, yeah, it was, and we were just in high school. It wasn't even like for sh- shit, you know. It was just a test or something, and people would be mean, you know. So this shit is way rather than that because you just fucking hang out with your homies and crank it, play really loud, and angry. That shit's fun. Yeah, you've been. Uh, you got a loud setup behind you. Oh, it's loud. It's loud. I actually, I, I told you, I have not, um, I was talking to your brother the other day. No one has ever heard both, or I don't have, damn it. I don't have my third amp with me because it's at, it's, it's currently at the wizard to be repaired right now. <laughs> There's a, a Santa Claus looking fellow in town who's become my friend named Charlie Harris. <laughs> he fix amps. He fixes amps like a motherfucker. And yeah, he's, he's fixing it right now. But, um, I don't think I've ever played through all three at once. Whoa. If I had all three, I would. But um, yeah, two of them still pretty goddamn fucking loud, for sure. It's but, loud, dude. I was bummed when I figured out that you weren't going to be down at powwow. This dude, year. I know. Was it because dude, of COVID? Fucking Rona hit. It was right when all that shit happened. I was just telling Anthony this too earlier. Um, yeah dude we were i was bummed about that too but like we didn't know what was going on yeah it was really weird we knew that there were yeah 
that's gnarly though because at the time like i mean we were we were looking on the internet doing research and shit and like there was talk of like borders being shut you know borders being shut down but i didn't know what like what that meant you know what i mean i was like oh my god we can't fucking we wouldn't be able to leave florida we get stuck in florida (laughs) so we we were bummed about that too but um we didn't know what to do man yeah that shit was Oh, also, I can't remember what it was. One of our, one of our vehicles broke down right before it. Oh, and I was gonna good. have to fucking rent the truck. Oh no, I wrecked my fucking Honda right before it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit sucked. I totaled my fucking Honda. Ow. And we were gonna drive. Um, I can't remember what we were gonna do. We were either gonna take all the equipment in one vehicle, and other everyone else was gonna ride in my Honda. Yeah, I think that's what we were gonna do, and then I fucking wrecked it. And you guys were gonna uh, perform as Toad, right? Yes, we were gonna do Dare at the time. Oh, Dare was gonna come because it's yeah. You guys do different roles for some of the different bands. Want to talk about some of your different yeah. projects? At the, at the time, yes. At the time, yes. But since then, we have merged. It's um, now become one. Yes, it is one. now just one project. It's just one one entity. There's no separation. Um, Big daring toad. Yeah, at the time, I think at the time we were going to go down as Toad Smoke. Yeah, we were. Toad Smoke was going to go down because Phil hit us up to see if Dare would, but I think uh, Elizabeth, who now drums for Toad Smoke was busy i can't remember i can't remember exactly what it was but um toastmark was gonna play the current current project which toad smoke now encompasses portions of what was dare and it will encompass more of that in the future um but it's kind of becoming its own thing now that it's merged it's interesting it's funny how these projects you don't know exactly what you're getting into sometimes it's just like it's a it's a beast of its own in a way i don't know sorry no 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 go dude yeah you, talk you, to- <laughs> welcome to fucking send it on this one this one's pretty interesting this is uh like there are other people in skating that like do projects as well so it's yeah we see them kind of go all different places. It's cool that you you're able to do one where you are. Yeah. I no more shows or anything this year, but you guys like work on recording anything thus far? Mm-hmm. We have been. Um, That's tight. We haven't we haven't nailed one yet. Yeah, I actually got mics and shit on my cab right now because we have been noticing that. Um, we have not nailed one down yet though. So we we started recording with like a certain number of microphones and then we saved up some money, bought more microphones, and now we have enough microphones to do everything. And then we got a noise complaint from a new neighbor. So I said, fuck it. And I just soundproofed the whole fucking basement. We I uh my mom had some leftover shit from an old project which is soundproofing board. And I don't know if you can see it, the wall panels or whatever, they're kind of like a tan color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That shit's just like fucking, I don't know. It's just like the best shit you can get for soundproofing. She had a bunch of it laying around. So I fucking put that up. And then now it sounds like 10 times better down here. So what we had worked on before we decided to, redo because it's the recordings just sound so much better they're just warmer and more natural and yeah there's like it's coming through clearer because the way the frequencies work in a small room like this that bouncing off so loud like the it's almost like i don't know it's like trying to shoot like I don't know, trying to like shine a flashlight in the snow or something. You know what I mean? It's like all this stuff is passing in front of 
and interfering with the signal that you're trying to capture, which is just coming from the speaker to the fucking microphone right in front of it or something. I like the way you put that. (laughs) Yeah, the fucking flashlight. It is like that, though. When When you crank it in a small room, every single... Every single portion of the room is filled up with some version of that. Going on. Yeah, there's fucking. Yeah, I mean, if you were to put your head in the corner, you'd still hear the music. You know what I mean? Anywhere, it's kind of weird to think about it that way. And the way it travels, too. I mean, it's. We have them set up to where they're all. The bass and my shit are facing each other, um, which could potentially cause some interference but it doesn't seem to really do anything and then everything else just shoots into this wall right here that has a bunch of openings oh, so wow. like all of the that that just goes to the upstairs that's the bathroom that's a, uh in his office and shit um and it that for the most part dissipates and i have some soundproofing up there too but um yeah, we had to kind of, I mean, I guess we kind of won it. We just kind of winged it, I guess. But it ended up working really well. Um, Long, longed it? W- winged it. <laughs> w- you know, winging it? <laughs> I know about winging it. Wanged it? <clears throat> it winged it. That's sick. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, any, uh, any timeline for an album? That sounds sick. No, we do not have that. I wish. You might be able to, um, maybe, maybe by 2022, we'll have an album now. <laughs> Thank you. That's not that far away. Yeah. I think we're, I think we've decided what four songs we're going to do too. Um, nice little think- yeah. Field the extended I, play. I like that. Yeah. Well, it might end up being an LP. I don't know how long each one is. Um, you play guitar in in the band? Or you play yes. Okay. You play guitar. I used to play bass for Toad Smoke, and then now I play guitar because I played dare. I played guitar in Dare, and then since the merge, it's now two guitars. M- me and David, David Sturkey are playing guitar, and then Annie's playing bass, and then Elizabeth Sturkey is playing drums, and they are David and Elizabeth are brother and sister. And yeah, it's 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 cool, man. It's cool. It's, I, it's this is my this is my favorite project I've been part of for sure. It's definitely a cool like family style group that you have. It's like a brother and a yeah. sister and a couple. It's like yeah, it's like cool. And then and then Dave lives here. I mean, Dave lives with us. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sick. yeah, dude. Yeah, family fair for sure. Then yeah, it's rad. So are you singing? Are you singing in that band? I have been, yes. I'm actually gonna sing two of the songs that we've sort of discussed about being on the album, and then Dave's gonna sing the other two. Um, have yeah. you have you thought about mixing and all that stuff? Like how you guys are gonna do that part? Dave has been doing that and it's been sounding fucking rad. Um we were just gonna run it, dude, on some like, just run it. I don't even know. We're, we don't even know. We don't know what we're doing anyway. You know what I mean? We just want to put it out, and yeah. like, we might fucking press it or whatever, um, or like make some actual shit from it, something that people can listen to in their car or whatever, rather than just on a phone. You know, a CD or a tape or a vinyl would be. Oh, you want to make like a tangible something. Yeah, well, I do want to do that at some point. Um, but for the first round, I don't know. Me and Dave were talking about just releasing it, like try, maybe trying to get it on Spotify. We, I say that because me and him just talked about it last night. We're, uh, but the whole band talked about it, and, and he wants to get it on Spotify. And, we're trying to figure that out with this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. There's a bunch of shit. There's a bunch of shit on Spotify. I didn't realize that there were so many, like all these fuzz pedal podcasts and shit that I watch on YouTube. 
it's all on Spotify too. I was like, damn, I, I thought this was just yeah. music. I didn't know. You know, that's cool. Keep, Y'all should do that. Yeah, you don't have to keep the app open. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, dude. YouTube yeah. is. It's it's got its pros and cons. Well, for music, for the music, for the music. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. They make you pay to have it like decent to listen to music with. Mm-hmm. That's I want to make a fucking music video with the BX, dude. That's what I really want to do. That would be the raddest shit. I'm make surprised there's not more. There, like, dude. Even... Odd Future did one back in the day that was sick. They mm. ground up a bunch of fucking pills and shit in a blender, and they're like out skating around with the VX, and they're like chugging this crazy shit. Yeah, I remember seeing that, and I was like, damn, they did it already. Yeah, you don't see them. Um, surprisingly, I guess there aren't as many. Like, there there are probably more than I think there are, but. Um, there aren't as many like skate involved bands that you would think, I guess. I mean, I guess a lot of people skate in bands, but it's not like a huge thing that it's like they're skate involved. You, you know yeah. the band Slow Season? Yes. I think there's I two, do. There's two rollerbladers in that. It's really? Like, yeah. I met one of the dudes at the Sunday brunch and I was like, I I hadn't heard of the band or no. Well, I had like one of the songs saved on Spotify. Mount Kimby. Who? Is that who you're talking about? Mount Kimby? No, I don't. Damn. Even had some Sunday sessions. Yeah, I, I know uh, the band that John Bolino just used for his last edit. What's their fucking name? Oh, for the most recent one? Or yeah, you, I think we used it. Are you, are you talking about the Sacramonte one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. The homies in that, they used to skate, too. Two of them used to skate, I believe. Rollerblade. Oh, no way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, when, when John and uh, John and Bill were doing Roast or whatever, I guess they played with Sacramonte or something, and they ended up talking about how they were skating. They were, those dudes were telling me about that. I thought that was pretty cool. That band is sick. Shit's sick. So you got to go to some roast shows and like see these that time. Yeah. That's like when you were yeah. off, when you were there. Yeah, dude. We 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 went to a shitload of them, dude. <laughs> yeah. They were playing a lot. It was sick. They were playing a fair amount. Yeah. We would probably I mean at least one once a month while we were living in LA. Twice a month, probably. Yeah, I think I caught them like once in New York and at a Blade Cup, but they might have been like Invader and then one I saw is Roast. Damn. Invader, though. I was was Austin singing for that? I think it's Nico. Was it? Because I feel like. Maybe John? Was it John? Damn. I feel like they had a project when they were living in, I guess, the Shredweiser house or whatever in Oakland. Hmm. I feel like they had a project where Austin Barrett was singing because he's got them, them growly vocals. Like, yeah, that shit's sick, dude. I can't remember. I think Eric Stokely was playing in it, too. I think they had it. I swear it might have been. I don't know. Oh, I mean, Stokely and uh, Daffick still do the. I, th- I think I'm saying it right, Eotvos. Oh, no way. I yeah. Know that. Yeah, they're, they make music. They were in uh, Hit It Wet, right? Yeah, like the, the Gumby Zach Be Free Metal song is them. Damn. Yeah, like I really. Now cool. I knew that. That's fucking sick. Hell yeah. Shout out Big Daffic. The hookup. Oh, yeah. Sick. The homie, dude. Damn, I knew that Daffic was playing with him. I mean, I knew that Daffic was playing, but I didn't know that it was with Stokely. Yeah, it's them, and then I guess they got one other homie up in Portland. Damn, I'm talking – I talk to Stokely all the time about music shit, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, damn, I'm tripping, dude. I need to, I need to mention that to him. 
but there's like you know it's like just a testament to how many people are doing things it's like it's hard to know everyone that's doing everything yeah that's true people yeah. like i hate when people are like dude you don't know about this i'm like dude you know how much there's to know about there's like there's so many things to know <laughs> thanks for it's telling awesome. me bro you don't have to be a dick Are, are you, yeah. you working on anything skating wise? Um, I am. I got some footage recently with uh, Luis that's living in Atlanta. Uh, got- oh, sick for Ocho. I don't wish maybe I should talk about that. He's he hasn't seen um, anything yet, so maybe we're blowing up his spot, but that's cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have that much yet. I got a couple clips, I think I got like three clips with him. Are but you? Then, uh, I'm going to try to get more, um, but it's... But are you happy with the clips that you got so far? Oh, yeah. Okay, sick. That, <laughs> yeah. that sick. One of them was one of them's tight. One of them's really tight. I liked it. I, um, I wasn't sure if you were going to, like, be able to get out with those guys, like, with COVID and everything, but it's cool that you guys are meeting up now. He came down here, dude. Oh, he's, oh my man. He's a go-getter, dude. Yeah. Sick, he's dude. That video is going to be fucking rad. He's going the extra mile to go out and film the people he wants to film. It's rad. Dude, that's super tight. Go, Lewis. Yeah, he's sick. That dude's fucking rad. Okay. Yeah, I would. I, I need to. I need to repay. I need to go out there and skate with him because I really want to go to Atlanta anyway. But I just, it's been too weird to travel. I haven't felt yeah. comfortable. Yeah, that's and you're probably seeing your parents and everything still often. So mm-hmm. that's one of the things yeah. that I'm like kind of fortunate. I don't really, I it's just me and my girlfriend here, and we're not at risk, in my opinion, for like serious things. Like we talked to Dom, and he had it, and he said he lost all his taste and smell, which kind of scared me. I was like, all right, that's not fun at all, and you don't know when it comes back. That's that's scary. That's scary. But that's like weird. I don't. But I I'm like lucky that I don't see my parents, and I feel like I don't put them at risk by seeing them and like what everything else that I do it's like I'm fine with if I do lose lose my taste and smell it's not gonna kill my family right right no yeah that's totally understandable um I actually work with my mom my mom is my boss my mom runs a architecture firm and a construction company now and um so I work for the construction company. So yeah. What do you I mean I've been what's, what your, are, what's your role? Now I'm a project manager. Which Damn. is crazy. Oh, little boy. That's yeah. big. I was I was fucking digging trenches for a minute there, but um <laughs> Yeah. The my previous boss, who was the previous project manager, got an offering at another company, and so I'm now fulfilling his role, um, which is sick. It was crazy. I because I've been to school, I have not completed my uh, degree in construction engineering, but I've gotten pretty close. And then Corona hit, and I didn't really know. I wasn't trying to take online classes for, I mean, a lot of these, a lot of the construction classes, like we would, we would spend the whole three hours of the class just reviewing plans. So like, how, I mean, you can do it online and shit. It, it, I should have just kept going in school because I'm now I'm swamped with work doing stuff that, because I'm used to just building and being, you know, a, I don't know. I don't want to just say a laborer because I was actually building things, but um, but that's a, little, like, a hand to yeah, you know, saying things, right? And now I'm just like running. I'm like doing accounting essentially and stuff. Like I'm running projects, budgets, and scheduling, and calling people, and making sure people show up to do the work, making sure they have insurance, making sure we have W-9, making sure we can pay them on time. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. It's, it's just way different than what I'm used to, which is rad though. I love it. It's what I always wanted to do. And I didn't even have to 
I don't know. I didn't have to do anything extra other than just keep showing up to work, which is cool. Uh, so now you're dealing with people like on the level, like if they don't show up to work, they have to deal with you. Yeah, but we don't have any employees. So the way, um, the way it works technically is uh, we have been contracted to provide, I mean, essentially we're, pro, we're our whole company right now is project management. So we hire other people to do the work. Whereas like when, when um, like this last project that we finished that I was actually working on it, I built a lot of the things and yeah, I don't know. It's different now. How long We're just you, hiring. How, hmm? long, how long have you been doing it? This new role? A month. One month. Congrats, dude. One, yeah. And it's going well too. Yeah. So right now you're basically overseeing like contracted work. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's it which is kind of funny because it's like the exact opposite of what I always thought I would be doing. Like you thought you were going to be the one being watched or just the one doing the work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah that's what, just that's the way I always thought it worked. I mean, I didn't even really, I mean, I just started work. I started working for a contractor when I was 18 and I mean, yeah, I know it just seemed like that's, that was the only way. Cause that was the, the one guy that I worked for. He was also like the main builder too. So he just built it all and he was the boss. You know what I mean? So, so you don't like a craftsman type, but, but like your work now has just gone from like physical work to like not physical work, like no physical work whatsoever. None. That's, that's nice for skating. It is nice for skating. Yeah. We'll see. It's winter here right now. So it's kind of rainy and. When I get off work, it's dark already. Do you guys have an indoor? Or is that no. not open due to COVID? I mean, you're, you're clearly, you don't want to go, but like, is it open? Just out of curiosity. Uh, like, the skate park is, the only park we have is outdoor. And okay. it's open. Yeah. But, but no, we don't have a park. The, I think the closest one is in, uh, shit, I guess it, the closest one would probably be in Nashville. I think How's, so. How's eating and stuff? Can you guys like eat inside or like you were saying before, awesome. like people are like they don't give a fuck like down where you are like yeah you know, just at the skate park or is it like kind of like people are eating how's Waffle House? Oh dude people are eating inside everywhere every restaurant is open people are going in no mask everywhere in the south. Bars are open too can you yeah uh, I think they are, because somebody the other day commented, I don't really know, but somebody the other, the other day sent me a message that said Electric Wizards, one of the homies that skates, Electric Wizards playing in the bar right now, uh, you, you guys wouldn't know the name, CBC, and I'm looking for you, so I guess they are open. Wait, so Electric like, Wizards just play played a there. show, too? <laughs> Their show? show? No, 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 God, no. Oh. No, 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 just over the stereo system. Okay. Hell no. Oh. I would be there for sure. Or no, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have gone. Honestly. I could see you with the gas mask on, like ready to go. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> dude. Your fucking sight, dude. Dude, I have the fucking painter's mask. I got some clips in the painter's mask, which are fucking hilarious. I don't know if it's in here. Oh, I got it over here. With who? With uh, Zach Lovell. Oh, nice. Oh, sick. Are they working on anything? Oh, he's gone. That's how, dude. He yeah. went out during Corona with the with the painter's mask on. <laughs> yes, dude. I was out here skating with this on. Dude, you do about it. At least it holds the hair back. That must be pretty nice. This one, the strap is kind of broken. But also, dude, you wear glasses. Get one of these, man. It will not fog up. No the shit. Will not fog. You'll dude. look like an insane person. And everyone will stare at you, but comfort, dude. You got clips looking like Dr. Satan? Yes, dude. I skated in this, dude. I, I, I so actually did a sick. pretty sick trick in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This thing, it's comfortable too. It doesn't scratch the mustache or anything, man. It's nice. They are kind of expensive though. No pulling like, on, the, on the facials? No, dude. This, it's like real soft rubber. I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I guess, if you were like sweating profusely, but I skated it in, in the summer. What is that? What's that material that's like, like hash doesn't stick to? Uh, silicone. Silicone. Is that what that is? It might be. Is that really thin. No, I don't know. But it's it is it's comfortable, dude. I'm telling you. I mean, it's not. Maybe I've just worn them a lot because I've done a bunch of like demolition work and stuff where you got to wear. I mean, you will not. You'll be spinning up black shit for a week if you don't wear one of those so hmm. i've gotten used to wearing them but um yeah they're fucking way better than the cloth masks in my opinion dude you gotta I strap like dr Staten. you gotta yeah you gotta strap that back on and get dr Staten into atlanta get some <laughs> more clips as dr Staten, dude i agree yeah. that, that, as much as possible on the, <laughs> the mask that thing is sick Dude, I this is my other this is my second one too actually. Um my main one is in the truck right now. I, I wear it when I go into the the high risk locations. Um Dude. like Walmart and shit. So you won you won a cool contest. You won a stomp. Did you win other you've won other contests, right? Thanks. So. No, just the stomp? Oh. I get, maybe I have one of the content. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was there for the stomp one. That was fun. You, that was fun. Well, at that forecast contest. Oh, yeah, you won. Now, see, that's, that's a technicality, though, because that was, like, separated into, uh, like, multiple um, – Yeah, there was, like a, like, a ledge competition and then, like, a – Oh, oh okay. They, they yeah. broke it down that same way. Uh, the and year. I can't remember. I think I won like one or two of them or something. Or maybe I just won one of them. I can't remember. But yeah, for combat. some reason, John Julio gave me like a fucking raincoat and uh, like it was like a one, but I didn't know that I won. I don't know. But they gave me like a raincoat and like a fucking banner, a video groove banner, which is in my uh, storage right now. Yeah. I don't know. It was that was a. I didn't know if I won. I, I think I got some money too, but I, I think I just won one of the contests or something. Did, did, v, did VG influence you at all during skating? Yeah. 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 I used to watch VG nineteen like all the fucking time. Okay. Yeah, all the time. I watched that a lot. Um, VG sixteen too. That Mike Murda section with the fucking murder blood upon. Joe, that, that shit was sick, dude. Um, I don't know. See, I have such bad memory that, like, I can't really – those stick out in my head a lot. And then after that, I mean, yeah, VG23 was fucking rad. And, like, I watched them all, but VG – I own VG19 and VG16 on fucking VHS. And – I'm sure that those motherfuckers don't play anymore. I don't know where they are, but I watched the shit out of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, those were rad. Walt Austin's doing like a fucking cess slide on the front of one of them. I think it was VG19. I think. Yeah. Joey, did you, were you a big VG guy? That's Not way before my time. Like, yeah. You've been uh, in this for a minute, right? Yeah, you've been in it for a decent amount longer than me. Like, I started in 2005. Mm -hmm. so the first video I saw was Able Out of the Dark. And there's a car alarm going off right next to me, which is really sick. You always got a fucking rooster that goes off, too. It's really funny. Oh, yeah, that's really sick. My neighbor's got some roosters. And You're just, allowed to have chickens in the city limits? Oh, they don't give a fuck out here. Like you, you yeah, get on horses. You get people get what on the people you think in horses. It's so no. wild. Yeah, they ride it up and down like the side of the LA River. The first time I seen it, I thought I was tripping. I was like, "There's no way." 
fucking a skate park in the middle of Watts and there's fucking dudes with horses like that's sick yeah that wouldn't surprise me as much as seeing somebody with chickens in Chattanooga here honestly that'd be more so, in Chattanooga there's mad people dude mad people in the south and in the countryside own horses so many people own horses out here it's weird but is it like a no-go people don't like eggs no, I think it's something to do. I don't know what it is, but it within the city limits, I guess. Uh, you just can't. You can't have livestock or whatever. And I guess the, the police here do care about it. I don't know. How many animals do you guys have? I know I see on your uh, stuff. It's you guys got a lot of animals. We got we got some cats. You know, we got some cats and a dog. Yeah. How yeah, many we got cats do you got? Oh man, I don't know. Oh, we got a lot of cats, man. How many, um, how many cats? You got, <laughs> you got a grip of a number. Fair is to say how many we have, dude. Oh, okay, that's fair. That's fair. You yeah. don't have to answer if that's the, if that's. No, we got a lot of cats. We love them. No, great. I I think I think you have to answer. I want to know <laughs> how many cats you think you have. Joey's super nice about it. I want to know how many you think that there might be because there's only one dog. It seems like. You There's definitely one have one dog. There's two rats. Two rats, but they're pet yeah. rats. Two rats, yeah. Um, the cats don't and, get the rats. No, they're in a cage. They're in they're and they're in David's room. So, and the cat we don't let the cats in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, because there's food in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. Damn. I think we have nine cats. Nine. Might, might have ten cats. I don't want. I don't, I don't know. I think we have nine. We we just got one recent. Well, there was one dude. It was fucking freezing the other night, and there was a cat trapped outside. And oh no! We took it in. We posted on the neighborhood thing. No one responded. All the college kids. We live like near a college. To um. All the college kids have gone home for Christmas, and we figured maybe, you know, once college break, I mean, Christmas break is over, one of them, they'll come back and they'll try to find the cat or something. But no. So we got another one recently because someone ditched their cat. This fucking cute little, I don't know. It's like black and orange. I would bring it down here, but then I'd lose it in the amps. And- black and orange, that's a cool mix. Yeah, it's like a I forgot the name of it. Um, like Malco. Like what? Calico. Maybe maybe it is Calico. Yeah, probably so. Like grayish and orange, or is it like black black? No, it's definitely black. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, There's I'll send y'all a photo. I'll send y'all a photo of the cat later. So there's so they like all indoor outdoor cats like you got like nine. nine no, eight. we all we keep them all inside, man. Okay, it's out there, dude, for the little fellers. It's too rough out there. Crazy. Um, yeah, we keep them all inside. So you got like, like, are there like nine different personalities walking around too? Oh yeah, oh yeah, dude. They're all so different. Damn, I wish I could bring. Let me go see if Sticks up there. Let me look for. This guy's name Sticks. So you got ten animals inside. Well, twelve with the rats. Yeah, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. I hope there's a toad. I think you should get four more cats so that it could be the Satanic Cat House. I have thirteen cats. They could have it in the music video too. Like all thirteen cats on the amps. That would be sick. Cats dressed up all like little like spike collars. I'm picturing. <coughs> Yo, <coughs> listeners, we got a Patreon. <coughs> it's yeah, it's below. 
you get to choose your skill level as well. So there's my boy Stick right here. Stick? Just Stick? Stick, dude. Come on, Shitty. Come here. Oh, Come on. look at the little Ian. Oh, he's blocking it. Stick. Good boy, oh. Stick. He doesn't have a tail. Um, he ain't got no ass either. And no junk in the trunk. Booty. <laughs> <laughs> And this is my dog, Mookshi. Mookshi? What's up? Yeah, dude. It's from an Ohm song. Oh. That's good. Oh. Yeah, dude. All right, Shuki. Go upstairs. Go upstairs, Shuki. I'll let Stick stay. Oh, my God. Okay, cool. Did he come hey, yo. Name him Stick? Yeah, his name is Stick. Uh, we were gonna just name him Matt Pike for uh, the guitarist of Sleep, but then we could start. We named him Matt Spike, and then it just turned into Stick. And <laughs> now I, I call him Stinky Bong and all sorts of things. But um, yeah, that's my boy right there. That's my son. Sorry, I need a cig. I know this is mighty unprofessional of me, but. Dude, you're allowed to do whatever you want. This is the world is your oyster. That's rad. Never. Had, oh no, I have had oysters. Yeah. You ever have Rocky Mountain oysters? Mm. No. Isn't that like a cow um, ball? <laughs> yeah, they're they're bull testicles. Yeah, I knew there's something weird there. No, but one time I took a shot with a, I think a scorpion in it. Maybe. Maybe I was just, maybe I dreamed that. I don't know, man. But on the Colorado road trip, there were all these scorpions fucking sleeping in everyone in everyone's tents. They were like in the desert. They were like, watch out for the scorpions. And I feel like I remember being really wasted and taking a shot of Jaeger with a scorpion in it or something. But that might have been that may be wrong may not be fact when'd you go on road trip what year was that i think that was 2012 oh damn was it i think so 20, or yeah it would have been 2012 yeah hmm no because i had already graduated i think i had already graduated high school it might have been 2013 that shit was fun I've still never been. It seems Dude, like a great time. It's rad. It's very rad. You just, yeah. All the skate parks are sick, too. Yeah, any event that goes more than one day is like, they're super sick. It's like the same way that in the that the powwow is sick like that. Yeah. You've been to a It's just like the house. whole, you just, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's just, you feel like you're a part of a whole trip. You know what I mean? Like everyone's fucking going to all these parks together. Everyone's getting wasted. Every, it's a whole part. It's a party the whole time, just like Pow Wow, I guess. I, at least I hope it still is. It used to be gnarly, dude. Like the party, the party around the campfire at the Colorado road trip that I went to was intense. Remember, I think I almost fought somebody because, yeah, Josh, <laughs> Josh Larkin kissed me on the lips and then like, I think I tried to fight him. I was really drunk. Um, and like they pulled me off of him or something. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. No, to the people, don't kiss Ray. No, I mean he, he didn't even ask. <laughs> he wasn't even polite about it. Like he just came in and just like assumed that he could kiss you. That's just yeah, rude. I don't know. I don't know. Rude. It was rude, dude. It honestly if you're was. Gonna kiss Ray, ask for consent. You should. You should, you should always. I mean, it should just. I don't know, dude. No, I, speaking of getting wasted, it seemed like every year that I went to a stomp, the whoever won, the Starnes brothers like would like black that guy out for the whole. Oh, dude. Jim won, and he was gone. I think he like walked some kind of like weird miles the next day but you won the next year and i was like oh i did the same thing to ray they did yeah it I, I, there was a running joke i think that they try to 
induce alcohol poisoning, but <laughs> actually their intent. I think they just try to provide a good time, but uh, what did they pour in my, they, whenever I, they announced it, they poured a bottle of champagne and a bottle of apple crown royal down my throat. And so I took like fucking 15 shots at once and then somebody fed me molly and i was done for and they were naked when they did that to you right no they were not naked that time that was a different uh, yeah i don't think they were naked they had talked about it for a while leading up to that <laughs> i would have remembered if they were naked i want there I, I forgot who was they i don't know who won but they were naked for them someone won they got naked they got naked the last time I went, I think. <laughs> I think they did. Have they gotten naked multiple times? Have they been naked when you were there? No, no I just... They, they, they talked... I, I heard them talk about it. And they were like, yeah. they announced it naked. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. That's insane. Sorry, I'm going to get this more wet. Come on, boy. I was going to say, what's up, Sticks? Yeah, you said. Yeah, dude. I haven't met a Sticks I didn't like. I know two. I know two. So how are we doing on time, dude? We're, like, we're probably close to two hours in now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How are you doing on time? Yeah. Oh, great. Get it. So, I'm like, good. we got I'm gonna, this. I'm going to grab it. Right yeah. Back. Huh? I was going to say, like, uh, so it's almost 7 here. That makes it, like, almost 10 there. I think so. Let me see. Am I going to end this if I do this? Yeah, probably not. It seems like you're doing all right. Oh, it's 10. It is 10, yes. What, uh, what, do you report for duty tomorrow? You managing the, uh, the job site? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I got to be there at 8. But that's no big deal. I, I, I usually I stay up till like midnight. Pretty much every night. Yeah, I'm going to have to put this dude upstairs. <laughs> Come on, boy. Once again, viewers, like, subscribe. Help us help you get you this, these talks with these people that matter to us and maybe to you. You doing the spiel? Yeah, I, I yeah. kind of give a spiel. Nice. Fucking... We want to go live. It'd be sick. He said that Ray's camera cut out immediately. <laughs> like, hey, hey, I'm back. <laughs> the bog monster. The vanishing act, dude. I'm surprised it hasn't. Oh, no, I'm still plugged in. I'll plug back in. <laughs> yeah, learn from your mistakes. You got to learn from your mistakes. Nice. Are we getting Sorry. that? I'm we powering get... up the console here. I want to do a. I wanted to go out with a bang. Yes. Oh, shit. Um, what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> One sec. I have never sat this close to it, so I don't know how long I can do this. You know, rock the, the, the plugs? Uh, no, hell no. You got some? I got some for you. Here. Let me see. I, uh... I would wear them at work sometimes, but that's about it. Yeah, I used to wear them at work when I worked at a a place that we would mill wood. Um, yeah, it's just that constant buzzing, like just yes, dude, that yeah. shit gets in your fucking head. Yeah, if we you, have these. If you if you need a pair, I, I got you. Ready? Uh, toss them. This. Damn, dude. Fuck. 
I bet that looks funny. It bouncing back. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I do have. I do. We don't need these though. Um. I don't think we've ever used them. Our our old drummer used them. These one time. Oh, so you don't use them? I was gonna say you're you're good. You're being safe in there. No, hell no. Our old drummer used these ones. <laughs> <laughs> These were what I wore at the fucking mill or whatever. Oh, word. Yeah. These things actually rip, dude. Like, in the op- on the opposite end of rip. Yeah, super noise canceling. Everybody can talk a bunch of shit and nobody's going to know. Right? Yeah. I, at least I can still hear you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they work pretty well. Sorry, I got to let this thing warm up. It is... Uh, powered by tubes so they must warm themselves before I turn it on um, interesting yeah dude tubes are fucking sick uh you watch those rig rundowns yes i do um i love those things yeah the most recent one i watched was the power trip one oh was damn new. that's pr- yeah. wait was it before or after it was before Wow, crazy! So they record. Damn, I gotta check that out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. I saw them. I guess on their last tour, they played with High on Fire, and that's, like we that's we, what I we saw. went to see. Yeah, we went. I went to see High on Fire, and like I left. Be holy shit! I should have bought a fucking Power Trip shirt and an album. <laughs> like I spent all my money on High on Fire shit. I should have. Bought some power trip shit because they were fucking sick live, dude. And then I just got into their shit super heavily. And then Riley Gale passed away. Yeah, I got super. the I got the same story. I was like, dude, this guy's athletic up here. Yes, dude. So sick on some Aussie shit. On some Aussie shit, dude. Like, but on a new new on in his own way. But like. Yeah, R.I.P. Show. Yeah, dude. I watched interviews with that dude, too. That dude was fucking rad. He was very sick. Yeah. Crazy. Sad. I don't I don't know what happened. Um, me and Annie speculated about it. But there's no way. I mean, if you don't know the person or anything, there's no way of knowing. Like, what? You can't just speculate and be like, yeah, this is what happened. What was his What was his name again? Riley Gale. Riley Gale. Yeah, yeah you he, should look up interviews of him, dude. He's like, for what you see on stage and what you hear, it, it's just surprising to see the type of person he is. He's like, seems like the r- nicest, raddest, pretty fucking goddamn intelligent dude. Joey's going to like this. I listened to a power trip, What's in Your Bag, where they go to Amoeba Music and they like put, they like do these interviews. But Riley Gale, I'm pretty sure it's him that suggests Sturgill Simpson. And that's how I got on Sturgill Simpson. Yeah. And it it was so weird because he's like, it's such a not power trip style of like rock music. But yeah, just him in general, like you see him in the interviews, it's like this guy doesn't, he seems all there. Seems like a good guy. Dude, his psych up music before he would go out on stage, he would listen to Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Very yeah. easy. He listened to uh, he. I guess his his parents were musicians. Maybe I'm not sure, or maybe they were just like connoisseurs of records and such. Um, but he's he would always listen to like R and B and funk and soul and shit before he would play fucking before you got there and scream bloody murder about yeah yeah it's it was sick rest in peace rest big in loss peace. sometimes yeah. listening to r&b really helps you get that soul out and like you need that to be like really letting the demons go <laughs> yeah hell yeah or he just wanted some damn peace for a minute before <laughs> that's I mean, a- yeah, i don't know yeah, it's hard. That shit's hard. I mean, singing like that is rough. 
Painful. Oh, shit. Thank you. All right, yeah, it's working. <laughs> uh, let's give you a little rig rundown. Like, uh, what kind of pedals do you do you run? Um, a bunch of black arts. So right now I have a uh, a lick pedals range master, and then that goes into an MXR phase ninety, and then that goes into a black arts revelation a black arts destroyer and a black arts pharaoh um which are fuzz boost and a, like an amp modeling thing for overdrive the kind of like a limiter the amp modeling thing it's uh what it does what it what it is it's a circuit that's based on the super bass amp from marshall and it i guess it's just an overdrive that's based on that circuit like i guess so. i'm not super knowledgeable about the pedals necessarily i'm more so have gotten into the amps and the fucking speakers and shit Black Arts and Lake Pedals, they make sick shit and it sounds fucking rad and it's loud. Um, and it works for this type of shit. There's yeah. a lot of different theories for, for how, how everyone does everything. Some guys just like one small amp and five, yes. five to seven pedals. Some guys like two pedals. Need like different amp setup. It's like, there's all different ways to go about creating the sound, so it's fun to see your version and hear your method. Yeah, it's overkill for sure. Um, that's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of the way, I guess it kind of bleeds over from skating though. Just like, if you're going to do something, do the shit out of it. Like if I, I want to, I want to play music, I'm going to play it as loud as I fucking can afford to, I guess, which is, this, all this shit's pretty goddamn cheap, honestly. The most expensive thing that I have is the orange amp or the orange cab. Um, I was just talking to your brother the other day, actually, about fucking. I was like, dude, just start, start looking on Facebook Market. If any of y'all out there want to buy music shit, look on Facebook Marketplace, look on Reverb, and just buy some shit. You can sell it again if you want to crank it see if it's fucking loud or whatever and it's really not expensive you just got to do some research like hmm. i got this thing for like 200 bucks and i'm gonna have it. it's worth like 1200 dollars to do this sold it didn't really know what it was now i have something that's loud as shit that i'm gonna play for the rest of my life the other one was i got for less than that this amp right here is a Wait. brand new laney aor Pro tube lead 100 watt, which is like probably a $1,300 amp. And I got it with a bunch of other shit for 250 bucks from some lady who her husband left her for a black metal chick in Sweden. <laughs> yeah, dude. Damn. Yeah. Came up. She like, yeah, she was, she was. So she sold it out of like spite? Yeah, that's great. It had been two years. Okay. So, like, she hit him up, and she was like, yo, come get your shit. And she waited two years before she put it up. And then she just put it up for – it was it was this cabinet up here. I can't even damn see it. It was that cabinet up there, two pedals, and some cables and a strap and Melanie for 250 And I told her, I was like, look, I'll give you some more money because – the Laney is worth like five hundred dollars by itself, at least. Like if it's not in brand new condition, which it is. And she was like, "Fuck it, just take it all for two fifty. Uh, fuck that dude." I mean, she didn't say that. 
but wow, she, dude. <laughs> yeah that's tight it was tight it was very tight. marketplace y'all facebook marketplace don't do it in chattanooga though because you'll be on my you'll be taking my shit and i'll be pissed <laughs> <laughs> doing your own cities and do it in your yeah i would know i mean you're not gonna be in chattanooga none of what? i don't no jay meyer's out here in chattanooga though julian meyer he's skating out here shit's fucking rad but no one's gonna... he's living out there now he's... yeah julian meyer lives here yeah oh, cool yeah dude we actually uh we've been uh we skated a little bit the other day i need to fucking get a new camera is what i need to do I need to get one that'll match Zach's. And I mean, Julian can just go out and get footage and shit. Because, like, the, I have the VXs, but. Nobody's doing it, really. No. State, well, state. it's not even that. It's just, I don't, I can't do it alone. Mm. I can't do it alone. I don't have enough time yeah. at all. Um, and like even before when I did have a shitload of time and I was filming motherfuckers all the time, I still couldn't do it alone. And we, I mean, like we could have made a video, but like we ended up combining with Mike, you know what I mean? And like, it ended up being a full thing then yeah. and the project flowered from there. But I mean, I don't know. We were, that was so much more involved than I've been recently. Yeah, yeah but getting a camera to film you and uh, Julian is a good idea. Yeah, it's chill. That's yeah. just chill. Yeah. It's, it, it would, yeah, it, but with the VX, like, I mean, I guess I could do that, but then it wouldn't match anybody else, and then I'd just be stacking. It's just so much work, too, on the other end, like, now especially, like, just do... What cable do you use, dude? That's what I've been wondering. Well, I, I use a laptop, a 2012 laptop and laptops going on almost 10 years old. That's like, and if that thing kind of dies, I have to figure out something else. And I probably wouldn't want to, I haven't really been doing anything with the VX. It's all the HD camera. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's no infrastructure now for the VX. Like the fucking computers just don't really, they're just not built to work with that technology. Yeah. yeah, and <clears throat> you can do other things to make your stuff look cool. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's, it's all about the freak in it and the vibes. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what the camera is. There's still I a thing, though. I, I like using the VX2 and turning it on. It like feels really good to hear that little thing start whirring and then like your tape rolls. Like it feels like a machine. Like when I got the HD camera, it's like. Very nice. HD, you just turn it on and the thing's like fucking on. Yeah. Like, that's it? No worry. We couldn't even watch our footage on our VX, dude. Our fucking playback didn't work at all. So you, it was just like, you you had to you get the, you had to know that you got the trick. And the filmer had to be like, yes, I filmed it properly. <laughs> you were good. Don't worry. It'll be yeah. there on the computer. And the viewfinder, you couldn't flip it up or anything so even filming like just stationary filming like a handrail trick you could never really do the viewfinder because the vx doesn't have a flip out the one the hole, yeah, right? one thousand. yeah you guys are going super super old school with the 1000 yeah. yeah it was just all blind which was fun it was honestly fun that's what we filmed most of the most of the possessed shit and most of which is the same camera that filmed Honey Baked. No shit. I yes, I believe it is. It was Malcolm's camera. Malcolm sold it to Taylor. Taylor sold it to me. And you, you're still in possession of it. Oh, yeah. It's still, I cranked it up the other day just to make sure it was still working. It's still working. I got tapes. I just don't know. the. I mean. Dude, that's, I I, sick. that's sick that you have that camera. I have the Lost yeah. Tapes camera. No way, dude. See, that's just how it fucking works. Dude. I got it that's from Buck. Sick. Oh, boy, that's sick. That's, dude, I like want to like, if we, we should just never get rid of those. Like, they should be. We, At we, one point, we should just like cheers, just bring them together. That's what like, I think. Over, 
and just that, cheers them just once. Dude, may, maybe we should, just, like, if, if anything, meet up and try and use them one last time. Oh, yeah. Like, to cheers them, like, use them together. <clears throat> And whatever we get, that's like, or if it doesn't work, fuck it. But like, we tried it. One long, dude, one long and a fish eye is all we need, dude. <laughs> it would be so fun, dude, to like match those up and just see if there's some real bog monster power lying in those cameras. There is. You can't see through them, or at least mine. You can't see through mine. You just got to film with it. Okay. It's, it's only the, well, I guess you can, but it's real distorted. Like the eyepiece has been kicked or something. And the fucking colors are like dude, why bouncing on that thing. It's a whew, nightmare. Okay. Well, maybe we could, maybe we'll figure it. I think we should figure it out though. It kind of be like a fun, weird, the kind of like with dude, yeah. your Joey Chase edit. We'll film your <laughs> Joey Chase edit with those cameras. That would be sick. That would be sick. That would be fun. I'll bust them out. Dude, they're in they're in the keep back there, dude. That's I, I'm saying that's like if we're gonna make something to prove it forever that that happened, we should use those cameras. I will not forget that notion. Awesome. Are you are your tubes warm? Oh yeah, they probably are. I'm rolling up so I can I'm I'm getting my own personal uh, show. Uh, I'm in the fucking chair, dude. I'm about to get not a personal show. It's for a show for everyone. This y'all, is try, this is not gonna be loud enough for y'all, and it's just gonna hurt for me. Yeah. Oh, I it almost came through. I we both need to like not talk. <laughs> Feel it through your nose, dude. No, but it's it gets to the point where you can feel your you can feel your eardrum like being moved by the by the pressure of the sound. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that was rough. Damn. Usually like it's crazy that just standing, like just standing and being like being right here, you're just a little like, bit higher. Yeah, right in the laser beam, dude. But like when you're standing, I mean, it's still is loud as fuck. But you're almost to the point where like ten feet out, if you were standing in the same spot, it would be that loud. But the way that the cones like shotgun out and shit, yeah, like right here, your head is right here. You're still safe. Just under yeah. your dick. Yeah, I mean, sort of. I mean, it's loud. You can feel it, like. You can feel your fucking jacket flapping and shit. Yeah. That shit's tight, dude. What kind of guitar is that? Huh? What kind of guitar is that? 
It's a fucking uh, it's a Memphis MG three hundred. It's dude, this thing is sick as fuck. I got this from an old biker dude out in the middle of Georgia. I drove out. Me and Annie drove out like four hours in the middle of fucking Georgia, and bought this dude bought this guitar for like three hundred bucks from this dude. It's a through. Uh, guitar. <laughs> it's this crazy fucking comes with super distortion pickups. It's from the seven. It says seventy nine on the back somewhere. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that carving that says seventy nine? Oh yeah, just just yeah. So it's a seventy nine, I guess. Dude, that thing's like a 79 race car. It looks so dude. fast. Yeah, this it's thing is like fast, dude. Rob, dude. This thing is so chunky. Like, I feel like it, I could bang it up against the table and the neck would be fine. It's a tree. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love the, the one piece. Yeah, that shit's sick, dude. It's supposed to, like... uh supposed to help with sustain or whatever having it like through the body super heavy it is super fucking heavy the one that i'm getting made right now i'm getting a fucking custom guitar made right now is generally based off of this one it has like the same pickups and like the same neck like fat ass fucking neck i'm getting a seager guitar dude i don't know if you know who that is but he makes these crazy fucking guitars I'm getting one of them and it's gonna be rad as fuck and it has the covid bat inlaid on the fucking top dude it says covid bat no it just said it's it's a bat and i wanted a bat and i didn't even think about it i was oh. like yo not not for for people that are thinking about it i think i know what you're saying you're not saying like a bat like an animal no it is a no it is a bat. no it is a bat it's a it bat. is a bat it's the wuhan bat dude he, he yeah. put the fucking wuhan bat on the top of the headstock of the guitar so there's just a bat head right here you on know the guitar. you know what a bat is like with the with the ball and chain oh hell yeah i thought yeah, it was no. like a covid bat but like the instead of the spiked ball it was like the oh, covid germ <laughs> No way! That's an fire, dude. Idea, dude. That's I. am gold. Right go there. me. So that that that's a tattoo. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That shit's great. I would get that shit tattooed on my body right now. That's dude, a great dude. fucking play on words too. Like, yeah, from a bat, like, or maybe, or didn't, or yeah, because there was that whole thing about the bat in the beginning, and then they realized it was actually a pangolin or whatever they're called <laughs> they look like armadillos kind of i might be yeah. fucking up what a bat looks like like the weapon it might just be a stick with a with a spike ball at the end i think the ball and chain it is. yeah that's a bat right with the spike ball so. yeah but it would yeah. still be sick as like a little fucking virus ball at the top instead of yes i wouldn't want to get hit with it dude hell no look that dude you don't get hit with that shit i want to see my beard hit you right in the nose Hell no, nah, dude. Stay away from my lips, dude. So, uh, what, uh, what skating's been stoking you up? Like, is there anybody, like, honorable mentions? Like, what, what do you, do you watch skating? Do you even watch skating, Ox, actually? Uh, sort of. I watch it on Instagram, and I'll go to an edit, um, sometimes, occasionally, um, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna rephrase my question. What inspires you to skate? Used to be being really pissed off. Now it's just trying to have fun, I guess. Um, yeah, it's funny. I I've actually realized that that I used to take so much of the anger and shit that I can put into this and put it into skating and now that i'm not doing that as much with skating i'm just i guess kind of going about it different i mean i'm still trying to jump shit and stuff like that but i used to just like i don't know not even really think about it just try to do 
the most angry tricks I could think of. I guess that makes sense. And I don't, but I, I could also yeah. see that transition in your skating over the last couple of years. Uh, mm-hmm. I yeah, personally love out. it. Like I, I like where your skating's going. Like it's still like very strong and stoic but you're doing more technical things and like being a bit more creative and it doesn't seem as angry, but like, I'm not as angry. I'll tell angry you that. Angry skating <laughs> is good. I'm not saying anything. It is. Like, I like angry skating is fucking awesome. I kind of miss but, that though. Like I don't have oh, that yeah. anymore. I'm not, I'm just not as angry. I don't know. Someone, I think have, you, stage. have you seen that kid, Matt Reyes from Italy? I always bring him up, but I'm re- He's rad. Yeah. Yeah. Honorable mention to him. He's rad. He's got. He's got it, dude. That kid is so sick. Yeah, he's got. Yeah. It. Um. Anybody else that you think's got it? Younger. Uh, younger. Um. What the fuck is his name? I guess it's Marius. He rides for them. Yeah. Dude, that dude did. That. Fucking soul stall bonk on that pillar back into the quarter pipe, gold. Mm-hmm. That dude's rad, and I, I can tell that he's. Uh, I can tell that dude likes listening to rock and roll. He likes skating angry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, dude, I don't know, man. I feel like I. I don't Levi skating. I feel like you and Levi. That's the homie. No, we, we, like that, that. He's killing it. He is absolutely oh, oh, killing it. He's very sick. I always, I, th- I thought it was Levy for some reason. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm pronouncing it like an American, but yeah, fucking Levi Van Levy Van Reese. Give, give it a shot. You say his name. I can say his name, bro. Say it. All right. Levy Van Reen. Levy Van Reen. I believe that's it. I, I, I definitely He's want to rad, though. Out. Yeah, we should. Very it. nice. He would. He would. He would not be upset that you're mispronouncing. His no, name. I think he'll find it funny, and we want to know how to say your name because respect, bro. That's all I'm saying. Y'all should have him on next, dude. He's, yeah, he can come on and say his name, and then say whatever else he wants to say. That'd be sick. Um, we lost Ray for a second. Oh, it's okay, we'll come back. He falls off the uh, the pier into the bog sometimes, and he comes back. It's all good. The bog monster. Fucking, I did not realize the rum wizard came from such a potentially scary situation. I thought it was going to be some lighthearted fun. That's what they turned it into. I mean, it does make sense. His yeah. near-death experience is just lighthearted fun. Howie, if you're listening, you should have saved our boy. <sighs> Hope we get him back soon. Uh, maybe. Maybe we're... we'll get him back. Should I oh, go to uh... <laughs> Oh, fuck. He's gone. <laughs> I'll invite him. Um, maybe his phone died? He probably unplugged his phone to plug in the fucking... Uh... Well, yeah, I hope everyone that's listening is enjoying this episode that we have going with Ray Cronenberg. He's a fantastic guy to hang out with. If you ever have a chance after the COVID bat, it's no longer swinging in these streets. The pangolin, dude. Pangolin. Pangolins aren't crawling up people's noses and, and killing your grandma. <sighs> you, we can all get back out there once they figure out the pangolin problem. Joey, I've left. You could get a a pet penguin at this point, or is that like not chill? Dude, you can't even leave the country. You can only go to Mexico. You think you could bring a penguin in? I don't know, dude. Maybe there's penguin farms or like. In the U.S. I don't know, man. Dude, did you hear about the mink thing? They killed all those minks in Sweden or something. No. Dude, some like a uh, northern European country. I can't I can't remember if it's like Sweden or, or somewhere, but they killed like thousands of minks. 
for they thought like, it was like a COVID. Well, it's like wherever that they export mink from, mink fur. So they were farming them originally. Yeah, and then they like were like, "Oh, this is a problem for COVID." So they started killing like thousands and thousands of these minks, and then they had these dump trucks that were like falling open and dumping minks for like mo- like hundreds of feet of dead minks in the streets. That's fucking crazy, dude. And all like was this at the beginning of COVID? Like, yeah, it was probably like when everyone was like really freaking out because there was like just this whole story about all these dead minks. That's crazy. I've never heard anything about that. Yeah, everyone, look up like uh, like like mink death <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not funny, but the way you said it was definitely funny. I mean, Google, dude, you can get it. You're just just a Google death. search. Just Google search mink death. you I, 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 I'm not gonna get out my phone right now and figure it out for you guys. But if you want to know more, it was a Vice article. They did it, not me. Mink death. <laughs> Vice. That's sick. Fuck, man. That's crazy. Yeah, maybe his phone. I wonder, I wonder if that helped with mink prices or. It. No, no I, well, it's uh, from the way that they were talking about it in the documentary or the the coverage of this incident. It was like now everyone can see like we should not be farming animals for their fur. This is fucked up. I mean, like, how did we not figure that one out before? There's a bunch of dead minks in the street. It's Thousands like- of dead, <laughs> that, like, and dude, it was so bad that it was like they were gassing them and they're like still alive after the gassing. It's like one live it's it's really horrible stuff like that it's it, seriously if you're gonna look at that stuff guys like be aware it's that intense yeah. fucking disgusting honestly it's fucking freaky but, this really got crazy honest didn't it i don't know i don't know what made me think of the mink deaths but uh, ray's got nine cats and they're all alive and happy and he's like a really great guy i hope he comes back to us on this show he might like and subscribe the fucking bog monster he's just gonna reappear instantly this is uh yeah whatever it's good practice should we uh yeah (laughs) if you want to fucking hear us just rant you can pay money for it oh we're back (laughs) the bog monster returns dude just just continuously Look at this. I had I have two chargers here, dude. I was plugged in. I was plugged into both. I, mean, I don't know why it wasn't working, man. Dude, you can't trust tech. <laughs> no, you cannot. But yeah, we uh, we covered uh, this mink. Uh, maybe I shouldn't even bring it up again. Just we'll go on from there. Oh, what is it? What is it? What's up? I missed out on something. Talk about some skin, uh, northern European com- country, fucking eradicating a bunch of mink farms because they thought it had COVID. Dude, we- that man, penguin thing. Are you looking it up right now? Because I see that fucking glare. In Western Denmark, they killed thousands of minks. That's not cool. <laughs> horrible I, I don't mean to laugh but like it's something you can look it up it's really weird vice did like a thing yeah, on it it's definitely. super super yeah. graphic and intense it's horrible <laughs> but i was also said that you have nine cats and a happy dog so in no way does that apply to you no no, no i didn't kill any minks um <laughs> i will look that up though that's interesting is there footage mm. the whole vice <laughs> coverage is like the, the, it's wild dude so seeing what happened to all that all those poor animals and like it kind of quashed their whole uh fur like fur for harvest industry type thing it's like everyone's like whoa all right we gotta chill out with like killing animals for just for skin which yeah. is good but like you know bad just because it took that yeah it's insane that it took such an event to fucking end such a clearly inhumane thing mm-hmm. they have synthetic hair you got plenty of hair you could donate some we can make a fucking coat out of that shit. 
I the lady at the gas station that I go to all the time asked me if I was going to donate it soon. I might. I I'm know. doing the same. Yeah. Yeah, I, got, I was thinking about, it. I got about to nipple. I could I could almost do the sexy pick where you, you cover the tip. Mm-hmm. But I need yeah. a, I need extra to get the third. You can definitely cover the third. Can I borrow some of your hair so I can dude fix on you, one? They dude, it has not seen a pair of scissors in a while for sure. How long? Um, Oh man, Annie trimmed Annie trimmed a couple inches off like a year and a half ago or something like that. But other than that, it's been a while. <laughs> your your ends look healthy. Like you look like you're conditioning, <laughs> like going through the fucking. We here. Let's inspect, dude. There's a couple. There's I a couple. I don't really you... know how to. I was told that you have to sort of. You you got to find the splits. I. I see a couple like frays, but it's yeah. short. They're not like dead. All right, bet. No, you're doing good. Thanks, man. Mine is looking haggard as fuck right now. That's why it's up in my hat. Dude, it's dude. With the fucking with winter coming recently and uh wearing hoodie yeah. all the time, dude, it's just a constant. I'm surprised I don't have a You have a, a pretty bird, bird back living living back here, man. Definitely a bird's nest. Little dreadlock back there, one big it, fat one. One fat one, dude. It's always the one fat one. And it takes like 45 minutes to comb it out, dude. It's rough. But yeah, at least I it's it's a conservation effort. Like letting birds mm-hmm. have habitat. Like, dude, the birds, dude. <laughs> if I could house some minks. I would, for sure. I would let them nest up here, dude, if I could. It's a safe space for minks. They're back a raise head. Yeah, in the nest. Yo, have you seen that movie, Lords of Chaos? Mm-hmm. I have. Um, I had actually not really listened to very much black metal before I watched that. And mm. then um i had i had listened to some i knew i knew of mayhem and i knew of dark throne um burzum yeah i don't really fuck with burzum i knew of burzum and i uh, that was actually the the main band that i knew about that was black metal before i watched lords of chaos which is there's a whole thing I've done a bunch of research on it because I've gotten super into the whole scene just because it's kind of like a, I grew up listening to a bunch of punk music and it's kind of, kind of reminds me of the whole thing. They recorded themselves. You know what I mean? They, they, it was all super fucking underground type shit. Like a um, grassroots movement. Yeah. <laughs> The whole thing about it. <laughs> well, yeah. The sorry. What were you gonna say though? That I've seen. I have seen the movie. No, um, yeah. I just figured it was like it, it was an interesting thing to ask you because I figured you had seen it. Yeah. I had that the hair talk yeah. and some of the other stuff. It just kind of reminded me, like. Yeah. No, no. It's funny. I kind of look like dead. Um, <laughs> oh, the, and that's that's what it is. You're fucking. Is he dead or death? He's dead. 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 dead yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Pel- you're, you're, L.A. Olay. I actually look dead. a lot like, which That's is crazy. crazy. Um, I wore black metal paint recently for a Halloween thing, and it was pretty funny. I have a jacket that looks just like his jacket in, like, his most famous photo and shit. Dude, I'm trying to... hair, you're there. I'm trying to use... Dude, and the cool thing about it, too, was, like, those dudes were fucked. Okay, those dudes were totally fucked. They were totally about white supremacy, but dead was not. Oh. Um, so, like, that's why I don't listen to Burzum. I don't fuck with Burzum. That dude's a Nazi. Like, oh, dude. his music's rad, but he's a fucking Nazi. I was and, even thinking, listening to the music, it's like, I'm listening to this music, I'm like, this dude killed someone. Like, yeah. if for, like, nothing, really. Yeah. Um... 
but oh, damn, I didn't really, they don't, they don't portray that and that. And I have never, I didn't read any of the Nazi stuff. That's, that's if another were, layer. Is Mayhem like Nazi-esque too? Um, well, he played bass for them for a while. And they are extremely like elitist in ways. Like even just like the whole undergroundness of the way it started out they like they wouldn't let certain people in they would like wouldn't even hang out with certain people and shit Mm -hmm. um and i don't know if that was based on how metal you were or whatever you know what i mean i mean they were fucking weird dude they were so much different they were not kill homies really i don't think um but dead was i mean in like inspirational in a way because like when you make music like like this, like that, and you're trying to get somebody to feel a certain, or at least know that someone else feels a certain way, um, he was, in my opinion, he has so far been one of the most, like, he is able to portray how he felt, it seems the best out of anybody that I've run across. Like the way that he thought of himself, the way that it seemed like he felt in life came out entirely in his lyrics. And it, uh, and it may be so easy to see that because it's so extreme. Yeah. Like the, the way he started singing or whatever. I mean, he wanted to sound like a dead person. He wanted to be dead and he ended up killing himself because mm-hmm. He buried his, his family. He buried yeah. his stage clothing and dug yeah. him up before like he was gonna go on stage. Yeah. So many different and details. I don't know if that necessarily I mean what what the thing is too is like um he was not infatuated with any of the other parts of what they had going on other than making music. And um, I've actually done a shitload of research because I've gotten so into black metal about what bands are actually fucking white supremacists. And I don't listen to them because, yeah. yeah, and it's because you just can't fucking support that shit. Um, we've actually, there's been someone, someone reached out and called us out like as a band for supporting black metal music and um i mean rightfully so in a way and it it's not that we were supporting black metal music it was i mean i post shit on mine but i only listen to like i only listen to fucking um it seems like Seems like you do a lot of research on what you listen to and like who these people are. Like it seems. Oh, dude, that's the whole. You gotta, you gotta know who these people are, dude. You gotta know their names because that, that you. I'm gonna meet these. I mean, not these bands. I'm not gonna meet them, but I intend on meeting a lot of these people. I mean, that's the way I was with skating when I was a kid. I was like, I'm gonna fucking. One day I'm going to be kicking it with Brian Shima. I've never kicked it with Brian Shima, but maybe I will someday. I'm sure, that'd be rad. I'm sure if Brian Shima ever watched this, I'd, I'd like to kick it with you, dude. That'd be sick. Um, but hell yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I am pretty confident that if I keep if we keep playing music, we're going to end up running into these people. We've already played with. Uh, I didn't meet anybody from Weed Eater, but we opened up for Weed Eater. I I talk Sick, I, mean, like, I could have talked to him i could have gone up and been like yo um the, our drummer at the time hung out with him for a while <laughs> he told him we we used to cover a song by weed eater called uh, monkey junction and he told him that we almost played the song and then the dude straight up dropped it to a straight face and he was like why didn't you play it tonight he should <laughs> He was like, you should have played it. And we were like, well, we like, he was like, well, we knew that like y'all were probably going to play it. And he was like, you should have played it, dude. 
I don't know. That was crazy. Um, but I didn't talk to them specifically. We've played with, we've, I mean, Dare opened up for the Obsessed, which the singer, uh, Damn, Wino, bro. you opened up Wino for Wino for, for St. Vitus, my fucking one of my favorite bands ever. The first concert I ever went to, and is, got dude. picked out of St. Vitus, and Wino was singing, and my band opened up for his band, dude. Yeah, oh, dude. yeah bro, I saw them in New Jersey. That's so sick, dude. They are so sick, dude, and they did. Yeah, they even, they play, like, whenever they perform, they play songs from their old project, too. Um, like, they ended with a song off a jug full of sun. It's a fucking, man, what the fuck is the song called? But it's from their uh, Spirit Caravan project. Like, they're sick, because they, they play Spirit Caravan songs as the obsessed. They'll play a couple of them, too. And, like, hmm. I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I, you research these people. I'm gonna meet them. I'm gonna meet these people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play another show with Wino someday for sure, dude. I'm gonna kick it with him someday. I Maybe. hope I, get I don't to know. See it, man. I'll be fucking so stoked to see the dude. Fucking get out of here. That dude. Bad. Yeah, that that was a good show, dude. But, I, I was I, at that same venue. I got this close. I could have kissed. Bobbling of pentagram, dude. I could have kissed that crack heroin mouth so easily, dude. Yeah, His butt eyes was right here, dude. That shit was sick. Yeah. Well, dude, shit, we've been. We did this. You might be the longest so far, like almost three hours. No, probably because I kept disappearing, dude. The fucking. <laughs> Rum wizard kept on showing some magic for us, just <laughs> pooping. Fell off the dock twice during the fucking <laughs> podcast. Definitely dipped your toes in a couple more times too. Like yeah. that's fine though. Sorry, <clears throat> I swear I was trying, dude. I swear I got this thing plugged up. Don't sweat it, man. Uh, don't don't trip. It's just proving a point. Okay. You want to? Uh, well, it ha- do you want to uh, like say some things? Say any, say any, any appreciations? I know you got. Yo, thing. you're on Haunted. Shout out Haunted. Are you on that team? Let me talk about that real quick. I am on. You're sponsored. Yeah, talk about your. Yeah. Talk about people that think that you're doing the right thing. Um. Derek Henderson. Shout out to Derek Henderson. I was going to say, dude, you got it kind of like that dude when he, when the day he, he asked me to be on S9 the day of the fucking uh, forecast trade show, I think. Oh, nice. I'd never met him before. I'd seen him skate, dude. He skates so brutal, dude. Gosh, video. Dude, his skating is so rad and like such an entity when you watch him skate and then like he came up to me he came up to me with a plate of cookies and he was like would you like a cookie and i was like yeah fuck yeah and then we talked for a while it was just it was so interesting to see slayer Derek henderson come up to me and offer me some intuition cookies and <laughs> see if i wanted to chat about rollerblading and then later that i guess it was maybe it was after that i can't remember but that dude's the fucking homie. I, I talk to that dude as much as I can. And that dude's sick. The skating's fucking rad. He skated to St. Vitus, which was sick. Him and Mike McMullen. It was the intuition edit. They used uh, Dying Inside by St. Vitus. Are you talking about Matt Mickey? Two- yes. Did I say the wrong name? You I don't know. Mike McMullen's the uh, Sunday Brunch crew. Oh my bad, my bad. No, no, it's all good. I, Shout out I didn't mean that. Matt Mickey. No, it's, it's all good. It's, it's so many people. Yeah, I have the, both the men with M names. They're great guys. You're fun. Yeah, and it's I'm kind sure of tough. It's it's fucking Mike McMullen and Matt Mickey. Like that's it's a double M. M and M's guys. Double M, dude. It's not your fault. Yo, the M M&M and M factory's in Cleveland, Tennessee. It's right up the street, dude. I'm not even kidding. If if anyone's eating my mom. 
my mom worked there as a kid when she was like 17 or something. She worked at the M&M factory. Wow. Yeah. I think she drove so a Who else is supporting you? <laughs> who else is supporting oh. you, like, like skating-wise? Oh, Razors and Haunted. Okay. And um, S9. Shout out S9. Derek Henderson. S- yes, I did not specifically say the company name. Yes, Derek Henderson runs S9. S9 has sponsored me. They're rad. Haunted's fucking rad. They sponsor me. Razors is rad. They got Colts. They sponsor me. Nice. Beautiful. That's good for people because, you know, it's hard to know things, guys. We're just trying to spell it out for you as yeah. quickly as we can. Yeah. Now you that's know. Pretty, that's, who, that's who the people are, I guess. They think you're doing it right? As long, yeah. As much. I guess so. Yeah. They're doing it right. For sure. Yeah, you gotta... You, you, there's definitely an aesthetic as far as, like, Razors has its but you know, there's a lot of people in razors, but haunted in S9. You guys are doing the right thing. Cool aesthetic. Got Ray. Oh, it all makes sense. When you look dude, at dial one six six four murder, dude. <laughs> That's the that is dude, shout out to Matt Oz. That is literally the coolest fucking uh play on numbers words it's a logo it says it just says haunted wheel company dial 1664 murder and it spells out that's like it makes it right i'm pretty sure i think it's that's the amount of numbers that it would be for a normal fucking telephone number i think is it the, is it the number of their thing like if you call no, that number, that be- oh my god best branding of all time if you, Dude, I wish my area code was six six six. That'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. I think they might have skipped over that one though. Dude, you know they do that um, with street addresses too. It's very yeah. rare that a city will actually let an address be six six six. And floors and buildings, people no, are so afraid of the thirteenth floor. They are, yeah. You know, it's funny. My dad's an architect. My, my parents are architects. My dad used to, he had to design, he had to design buildings that the 13th floor was either left off of the plans and it just skipped and it went straight from 12 to 14 or the 13th floor was accommodated for things not like storage and stuff like that. Things where people don't go which is so that's like in certain circumstances that's like a four hundred thousand dollar decision that you're just like we're gonna base this entirely off of superstition no the 13th floor we just can't use that dude you gotta build another one up nope it's so (laughs) ingrained in humanity it's like yeah i was yeah I was listening to like, a podcast that was Dude, like, everyone's afraid of evil. It lurks. Yeah, but 13 is also like a lucky number in some like culture, yeah. which is so ridiculous. And now everybody doesn't have a 13 floor. It's like, come on, guys. 666 is six, six, a lucky number to me, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> dude, there's there's 666 six, six, like buildings here in SF, and I want one. So I want to live in a 666 six, six building so bad. Are there? They didn't skip it. I t- I, there's like Francisco? there's multiple six 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 buildings, and they're like oh, the, down the Bible Belt. They skip it, dude. They skip that shit quick. They, I'm sure they, long before permits and plans, they're like, nope, this address is not six six six. That's crazy. Some of the six six sixes are like kind of like goth mansion entrances. They're like yeah. All the walls are black, marble floors. You're like, wow, this is an evil palace. And you can just see it from the street. Dude, I can't wait to build myself a wizard tower one day. It's going to have a huge black gate. Dude, it's going to be so rad. Out in the country, no one around. Yeah. So I actually asked this question to a lot of people. You get one renovation paid for by the air. What are you putting on your house? Like, for example, oh, like, tower. like a moat was always my answer. No, a tower. A tower? Just like, oh, yeah. where's it going? Up. 
<laughs> Where you play the music on the top. Real far up, dude. I want to be as high as I can be and look down. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I thought with that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking sick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the tower, that, I mean, I, yeah. To my house currently right now, this house? Sure. I would just fucking bulldoze it and build a huge tower. <laughs> just a singular tower? I mean, yeah, it would be a living There would be living space within. I mean, it would be, but it would just be a tower. I mean, it would be circular walls, non, non-penetrable. Yeah. <laughs> a fortress of sorts. Yeah, you know, a circular wall is the least penetrable because it, and that's why, like, castles on the corners, they would build towers because with a corner, you can fucking beat the shit out of a corner and eventually crack it. But with a circular wall, it's harder to slowly break a crack in it. Penetrate. Because they, like, push into each other, correct? Yeah. I guess so. I don't really know. I guess it's just based on the fact that the corner. I don't know. I've never tried to break into a castle, though. It'd be sick with catapult and shit, dude. Be dude so... they, have this, they have this place in SF that they call the Porn Castle. Oh, no way. Yeah. We used to have a... Oh, wait, go ahead. Go on. Go you on. Porn Castle? Well, kind of. We used to have a... There was a Playboy Mansion in like up on one of the ridges here and like all the kids used to go and party there and like now all the shit's been like stolen out of there there was like a pool in there and shit and like dude honestly the pool was i think skatable at one point i don't know if anyone ever skated it though but it's like full of trash now and shit i've never been to the playboy mansion but it's here somewhere dude there is playboy mansion find that pool yeah that sounds like yeah. a good fucking mission. Yeah, except I, yeah, I think you would need a like some heavy machinery to clean it out. Potentially, I, I I have seen photos of it, and it looks like the roof may have, may have partially collapsed into the pool. It must have been a shittily bit built mansion because it was. It was only built in like the 70s and it's just fucking dilapidated. <laughs> Did not seem impressive. like it. No, they were not. The upkeep was the, yeah. I built with that the upkeep was money. not there. No. Well, dude, uh, we should go visit this porn mansion. Porn Castle in Chattanooga when we come and film this epic Joey Chase VX section. Any final yeah. words? We've been at it. Thanks for coming. You're the man. It's been fun to talk to you and like hang out for a couple hours. It's been sick. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's rad. You know, uh, with COVID and everything, I haven't really gotten to see it. Well, like at least once a year, you'll see, I'll get to see you or see someone, see the homies, you know. I haven't gotten to. It's fucking sick. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun to hang. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Well, episode seven, folks. Bye bye, y'all. See you later.